Welcome to the uh, Northampton City Council meeting of June 5th, 2014. I'm City Councilor Bill White and I'll be presiding tonight. Uh, before we start everything, uh, I feel it's important actually at this point to note the passing of uh, Christine Cavallari. Yeah. Um, to many in this community, Chris uh, was the welcoming owner of Cereos, a uh, personification of everything that we cherish about Northampton, of course. And when you talk about the value of local businesses and their, and their owners, you're, you're talking about Chris and her husband, Gary Golick. Uh, Chris didn't learn to be compassionate and responsive to customers. And she didn't do that in some business management class. Um, she genuinely cared about her hometown and the people who came to her family store where she grew up. It was, um, it was who she was, not who she was trying to be. So the fact that we will now talk about her in the past tense is a very difficult proposition to consider. And I hope that uh, everyone here in the chambers will join me in a moment of silence and take the time to consider her good work and her family during this time of shared loss. Thank you very much. Um, we'll now start the way we start most of our meetings. I have to correct me every um, With the public comment. Um, tonight, the main agenda items, of course, are the municipal budget. Um, and, and it should be noted, this is the one of the more significant things that we are charged with as counselors to deal with. Um, but, and there are other items on the agenda to be sure. But that obviously is probably foremost in folks' minds. Public comment, we invite people to come up and speak on any topic. It doesn't have to be any issue that we're particularly talking about at this point. Um, we ask that you uh, identify yourself and your address when you come up to speak. Uh, keep your comments to uh, three minutes or under. We will we'll have a timer. We're going to be working on the timer system, too. That's we're coming up with that. Um, and um, also, uh, to understand that the council is not allowed to respond to you um, other than we will we are committed to paying attention to what it is you're saying this is your time not our time we have plenty of time to speak afterwards so with that with those caveats actually I'm going to look out in the audience and I'm going to bet on the list even though I don't have it yet we have Steve Harrell who is probably well, look at that, <laughs> Steve Harrell. How how did I do that? I'm, my prescience is astonishing. Steve, you're welcome to come up and speak, please. <coughs> my name is Steve Harrell, and I live at 474 Elm Street. I'm sure that Interim Superintendent Regina Nash has generally done a good job this last year, and I thank her for that. But last night at the budget hearings, she made some glaring misstatements about the issue of the early high school start time, and I would like to respond. One thing she said was that research linking later starts with higher performance is, quote, inconclusive. This is outright erroneous. Uh, Pam will pass out to you soon uh, summaries of only seven out of scores of conclusive studies which contradict her. You'll see there is a connection between later start times and higher academic achievement. Last night, one of you asked Dr. Nash to confirm, which she did, that Northampton High was already an excellent high school with high ratings. We do have a number of very highly motivated students, and that's great who will do well in any case. We are concerned about the majority of students, and especially the at-risk students, and even more the special education students, who have a very difficult time with an early start. Even for the top achievers, why should we force them to drag through their day on insufficient sleep? Dr. Nash went on to say that she doesn't, again, think that even an extra 30 minutes makes any difference. This is also contrary to the evidence. 
Perhaps she missed an article by the National Sleep Foundation which says, quote, a modest delay in school start time of only 30 minutes could significantly improve adolescent alertness. Other reports state that 15 minutes makes a difference. She also said that nowadays electronic devices keep students up longer. I think she missed the letter to the school committee from local pediatricians Dr. Jonathan Schwab and Dr. Peter Kenny, in which they state, quote, because this has to do with biochemical differences between adolescents and adults, these changes in sleep patterns are seen over multiple cultures and could not be said to result from influences in current American culture, such as TV, video games, or cell phones. I rest my case, but not quite. <laughs> the school committee will be taking up the issue again next February, so you'll hear more from the community regarding the role uh, that we hope the city council can uh, take in this important issue. I will leave you with this fact. 53% of Northampton High students report falling asleep in class. This isn't doing anyone any good. Some city officials seem to be okay with this. I know that I am not. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, Jasper Lapiensky, please. My name is Jasper Lapiensky. I live at 226 South Street. Uh, this public comment will have the dubious honor of pertaining to a thing that is physically closer to this room than anything I have spoken about thus far. It may not satisfy my regular viewers in substance as it is basically an attempt to stick up for people who are driving short distances into town, but it will be familiar in style. Is there some particular reason we can't move the big yellow cones that are blocking the right lane of New South Street? No one is in favor of this measure. No one. I have spoken to numerous counselors, members of the executive, heads of departments. No one will take credit for it. No one is supportive. And no one thinks it's a good idea. Anyhow, to whomever made the decision, I have lived on South Street proper since September, and I'm here to report to you with the results of your efforts. One, traffic wait times have increased on New South Street by a factor of four on cons and Old South by a factor of two, and on regular South Street heading up the hill by a factor of three on weekday afternoons. Two, the pedestrian phase at the South Old South traffic light has been rendered obsolete during daylight hours because the traffic never starts or stops and thus very, rare, very rarely permits a direct line in the crosswalk. Three, the crosswalk behind the Academy of Music has gone from its original classification of harrowing and potentially deadly to its new status as the least user-friendly crosswalk in the Pioneer Valley, easily summed up as, quote, I'm six feet tall and I can't tell if a car is coming from either side until I step out into traffic. Four, since the bike lane is separated by the cones, pedestrians now face a brand new bike hazard with need neither bicyclist nor pedestrian can see nor would expect to look out for. Five, PVTA no longer has the physical ability to run buses to and from Holyoke, East Hampton, Florence, the VA, or Williamsburg that comply with any particular schedule because the traffic wait times are so long. Congratulations. Obviously, it's rather unique for me to be on the side of everyone, but as long as I am, let's do something about it. Here are some ideas. The council could amend any one of the 40-some-odd financial orders to include a provision authorizing a few hundred dollars for the removal of these cones. The council president could assert his privilege to add new business in order to address this ongoing public safety emergency. The council could inform the mayor of its intent to refuse to bring his fiscal 2015 budget to a vote until he remedies the situation. Um, the Finance Committee could insert a line item into the appropriation for the renovation of Pulaski Park that requires it be done before the work can begin, or you could all just get together and find the person who did it and instruct him or her to take care of the situation immediately. This is not a Ward 4 problem nor even a Northampton problem. We all use downtown, and this is an everyone problem. There is no reason to wait until another 18-year-old gets killed, this time due entirely to city negligence. Thank you. Hey. Thank, thank you very much. Yes, right on the right on the button. Thank you. That's all we have signed up for public comment today. Is there anyone interested who would like to speak at this point? I'm going to ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Councilor Adams. Here. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor White. Here. Councilor Klein. 
Present. Councilor Labarge. Present. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor O'Donnell. Here. Councilor Chera. Here. Councilor Specker. Here. Uh, we have a 705 <coughs> hearing public hearing scheduled, and that's what I'm going to uh, going to request that uh, we call that. Someone put a motion on the floor to uh, convene S that. So moved. So second. second it. All those in favor of opening the public hearing, please say aye. 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 This is a public hearing uh, on the mayor's proposed FY 2015 budget. Um, I'd like to say that the public's invited to speak to this point. Um, and right now, I've got one public member left. Um, uh, <clears throat> we have no one on the sign-up sheet. Do you have uh, the list? Does the one member of public, would the one member of public like to I'll just expand on his thoughts? And at this point, we actually are able to respond, just so that if, if you're interested. But um, his thoughts were not on the budget. They were to some degree. But in any event, are you inclined to, would you like to speak? Okay, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want you to lose that opportunity given the fact that you are the one representative member of the public here today. That's the public's fault. I don't disagree. My only thought on the budget is that I believe the city council should um, take, take, take it as an opportunity to do its own bidding. The mayor doesn't have to present something and have it signed off on. It could be edited more than it has in the past. Just a, But I don't have a strong... Well, let, let me explain, though, something that's rather important that, that we need to re-explain every time. Our authority over the budget is merely to cut. <clears throat> we can only cut only by department, not by uh, line item. We cannot add to the budget, and we cannot relocate funding uh, in the budget. So uh, essentially, we... And then there are other authorities to approve or disapprove. Um, and to that extent, yes, we could apply leverage by refusing to approve. Obviously, there, there's some pretty, it would have to meet a pretty high threshold because there'd be substantial consequences associated with that. But, <laughs> but For that, instance, the potential death of another 18-year-old. But um, That's one possibility, yes. And then, but, the, uh, but it's also the shutting down of the city operations and functions. So, I mean, and I'm not arguing with you one way or the other. I'm just saying this is this is the parameters of our authority, just so right. everyone, so you understand. No, my suggestion would be to negotiate beforehand as opposed to. If, if we pass a budget, it takes effect anyhow. That's true. That's that's if we don't pass a budget, right. it takes effect anyhow. That's true. <laughs> that was my one. <laughs> that that was my one. And I, I appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Fun I mean, out of as, it, uh, you know, I, I'd like to point out that. I'm grateful that you're here to speak to this because, um, as I said in the beginning, this is because one of the most important things we do. This is the the budget is the is the declaration of the community's um, aspirations and hopes, and um, I don't know what to presume by the lack of of uh, public interest and participation, possibly outreach, and maybe we failed failed on that point. Um, but it is disappointing that. Not that you're here, but it's disappointing that you're standing right. alone. If you watch All In with Chris Hayes, you know that um, a budget is a moral document. Perhaps you have all passed the moral test in the public's judgment. I would never presume that. <laughs> I, I would. Okay. <laughs> all goes for that. I, thank you very much for that, Jasper. Um, Susan Wright is here. Um, if counselors, we, uh, and, and for the public to understand, we've actually, the reason we're convening late today is we completed our second round of budget hearings. There were also public meetings, and there were members of the public present. Um, but this is the public's opportunity to speak on those items. We have been discussing all aspects of the budget, but might now might be the opportunity for Susan to answer some of the questions that she's capable of if that might have been spurned during the course of those discussions that, or other departments that maybe you felt didn't get, uh, didn't, that we didn't vet. Um, what it counts respect. Well, I actually don't have a question for her, but I just want to thank her again. I know everyone said this the last time, but I, um, in the years I've been on this council, the budget, the way the budget is has been presented has gotten better and better and better, and this is the best one yet. And it's extremely clear. Uh, I know the first few years, 
I'm, I'm sure I still would not get an A on a budget test on this of understanding every piece. But the first few years, I found it extremely confusing, even after hearing things and, and you know, asking questions. And I now find this incredibly readable, uh, common sense. It's laid out in a way that I think just about everybody can understand just about all of it. So I appreciate the work that's gone into it to, to make it a document that the public can understand. Councilor Carney, Councilor Murphy, do you have a question? No, yeah, yeah, Councilor Carney. Carney. <coughs> I, I echo um, what Councilor Spector said in terms of the uh, real readability and user-friendly nature of the budget, but want to point out one specific piece that's extremely helpful, that's the seven-year comparison. I know in the past we've had three-year comparisons, but just broadening that out really just gives a, per a sense of perspective that's very helpful. Thanks. Council Murphy. Well, and I think uh, something we also want to consider and, and why um, we may get to this point, and there's some level of consensus, is that uh, the, the, the current mayor who, who drew the budget, whose budget it is, has, is not that long gone from this body, and most of us here served with this mayor in the, capa the legislative capacity, and I think he takes a lot of where we're coming from into putting the budget together. And, uh, you know, and I, I think that does result in a budget that we're comfortable with because, you know, he, he came from this body not that long ago and understands what our concerns were with budgets of the past. So I think that does result in some level of uh, conformity to what we're thinking we'd like to see our budgets look like uh, bec because they're drawn by a member not that long ago, from, gone from this body. So I think that matters a little bit. He is, however, gone tonight <laughs> for right now because he's he's actually presiding over the Smith Vocational Commencement and will is expected to come in somewhere around 8.30. He was fully expecting, of course, this hearing would go well into that time, and I'm not so sure that will be true. Um, I, the uh, Well, since we're piling on with the, the kudos, I think the more another salient feature is the fact that this is long-term budget planning which is not necessarily a luxury that we've had in the past, but it also speaks to the fact that the financial team in the mayor's office, headed by Susan, has, has a long view. And a long view also includes cleaning up all of the irregularities and some of the challenges that we've had previously. So you're seeing a, essentially a, a cleansed structure that's high function. It also has a lot to do, of course, with the community's um, commitment expressed by, by their override vote and opting for an override because that actually gives them um, the ability to project out years in advance and now it's beyond 2018, right? Is that the, you're talking about um, years, uh, years beyond that, beyond the mayor's, uh, uh, this term that the mayor is serving in. So I, I, I would like to take Mr. Lapienski's suggestion that the community uh, this, the absence of comment is a reflection of the community's support and or general comfort with what's being proposed. I'd like to do that. I've been to way too many public meetings to know that's not always the case. But the, f the fact is, is that I, I think there should be gleaned something from this, at least from a lot of people that I've heard from who feel uh, there is a sense of stability and a sense of hope as opposed to the general litany of despair that we've actually been presented with on every every year for, <coughs> for decades. So, so uh, Councilor uh, no, O'Donnell next. Please, yeah. Councilor. I'm happy to, to wait. No, no, please, go ahead. I, I just wanted to say, I mean, it's the first budget I've, I've worked with, but what strikes me about it is um, it's not just a budget to keep government running. We actually get a lot for this budget. And as, as in, insofar as it is a moral document, we're making the moral decision um, to invest in Northampton. There's money for traffic calming. We're buying land to protect our watershed. We're road resurfacing, improvements to our schools, and, and then vast improvements to uh, our water infrastructure, among other things. So this is something that I think will benefit the city for many years. And I, that's something that um, I think is important to emphasize. Councilor Murphy. Oh, just comments, you know, long term came up. And um, I want to send a compliment back to Mr. Pyle. Um, Susan inherited a debt schedule that is as long as her arm. 
you know, and we continue to do that with capital improvements, looking out to the ending of uh, a couple of debt exclusion overrides. And we're very conscious of trying to maintain some stability in the tax rate. So when we look at other capital improvements, we look at, you know, when's high school paid off and when does that off, when does the impact of that off the tax rate so we can slide another project in so that we can continue to take care of our infrastructure but not burden the taxpayers with a big blip in the tax rate, but to try and maintain some consistency so people, you know, that they don't get any financial shock out of the fact that, you know, we haven't taken care of something that just pops up helter skelter. Um, you know, that's something that's very, very carefully reviewed. I know in capital improvements when we're looking to decide when can we do a major project that it doesn't create a sticker shock in a tax rate. <clears throat> the other thing that, that's unfortunate but is also long term, I want to thank the citizens like everyone else has for the most recent override because that's going to provide us stability for the next several years. But please remember we just settled some major union contracts. Uh, we've, we, there's the, we've got agreements now but I don't want people to think that it's like kumbaya forever because increases, you know, increased labor demands, increased energy costs, increased health insurance costs mean that, you know, three or four years from now, we're going to be back asking again, be just because of the nature of what we do, you know, the city is a service industry and it costs more to provide these services. And every three or four years, we're going to find ourselves in the same situation again, where we have to redo contracts, where we have to redo health insurance, uh, where fuel changes again, and we'll find ourselves back to the situation. We are going to have to go back to the voters and say, you know, we've had stability for a couple of years, but like your costs have gone up, our costs have gone up. So that the, that the situation we find ourselves in now of stability won't be around in, say, three years. And we're have, going to have to go back and say, here's what our current costs are, and to maintain the comfortable feeling we have in Northampton this year, we're going to have to consider anting up again. So while this is a nice, comfortable year, it, it, three, three years from now, it's not going to be again. And we're, the, the same cycle is going to begin again because Prop, Proposition 2.5 is a 1980 reality, and 1980 was a long time ago. And it, it just doesn't keep working over and over again. So I don't want to be the pessimist, but we're patting ourselves on the back this year. But please remember. Keep going you can. It'll, <laughs> it, it ain't going to last forever. <laughs> Council Labarge. Thank you. Um, I think the mayor, Councillor Murray, actually states that mm -hmm. in his message. Yes, it does look mm -hmm. fine, and I agree with what you were saying. But he also says in the next three years, we need to be very careful here. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling every department to be very careful. School committee right down the line. We've got the money. Yes, we're moving on. But we need to be very cautious because we could be in a predicament again of looking at another prop two and a half. And I don't know. Well, any other comments in the public hearing? Susan, did you want to add anything or say anything? Uh, if you have questions on part of it, I'm here to yes, answer. Yes. Uh, Council Labarge. Yes, can I recognize Susan, please? Oh, she, she's already mad. It's, yeah. <coughs> <laughs> better stand up. Susan, I know I have called you um, about the budget, the general fund budget of $80,645.732. But in the mayor's message in the book, it states $85,797,556. And I have talked to you about that. And can you explain the reasons for that? Because Funny, after I had called you, my neighbor was talking to me and said, well, that's not what he is saying. Okay. Um, what counselor is referring to, if you look at um, page 10, um, actually, actually, that's revenues. Let's go to expenditures. Look at page uh, 16 of your budget. Um, the order that's going to be before you in finance actually is an order to fund the general fund budget and it starts with the order the sum of 80 million 645 and what counselor asked um, if you look at the bottom of the actual expenditure budget for the general fund the whole general fund is 85 <coughs> 7 million but the order is only for 80 million and the reason is there's a section of non-appropriated uses there are things that are in the general fund that we have to budget for, but city council does not appropriate them. And that is the general, the overlay for abatements for the assessors 
it's the county lockup assessment, it's the charges that we get from the state on the cherry sheet, the offsets that come in, the school choice money that comes in, it comes in and it goes back out to the schools and same with the libraries. And then it's the charges on the cherry sheet that the state charges us for charter school tuition, school choice. So those are all expenditures. There's another five million or so of those expenditures, but you don't actually appropriate them. So that's why the order that's before you is is about five million less than the actual general fund budget. So I think that that was what you yes. asked. Thank you, Susan. Councilor Adams. I just want to point out that um, I think it's been said that there could be a need to request another override within the next next handful of years, three, four years. Mm -hmm. But the mayor has told us that he expects his fiscal stability plan to extend into 2020. So if he's correct about that, it shouldn't be before then. Um, Councilor Sheriff. And I, same as Councilor Adams just said, um, I, I definitely agree that we should continue being careful going forward. But um, since this is projected to be stable till 2020, do you, do you still feel confident that, that that will hold? Well, it's based on assumptions. Um, and the assumptions on the revenue side are extremely conservative. So I feel. I feel very confident that our revenues will actually be slightly better because we really went very conservative. On the expenditure side, that's the really difficult piece because collective bargaining agreements are settled for almost all but one union until 2016 and then we're back out. So that's 17, 18 and 19. We have built in some modest increases in those but it remains to be seen what those are. The other big number that's um, difficult to pin down is health insurance. Health insurance is about $10 million of the general fund. So that is a huge, huge percentage. Um, I think we used, for health insurance, looking at employee benefits, we used 4%. So if it goes higher than 4%, then that, of course, is going to throw off some of this. So but salaries and health insurance are the two big unknowns. They're the biggest part of the budget. And we have, I think, done a good job in coming up with what we think, based on history, is a good percentage. But again, those, if those numbers shift even 1 percent, that's a big number. Any other questions? Susan, thank you again. I really do appreciate it. I would accept a motion to close the hearing. Close the hearing. Second. All those in favor of closing the public hearing, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Well, no communications from the mayor because, well, the mayor's not here. Um, so we come up next to uh, the second reading of, actually, you know what? Did I skip the, <laughs> the one minute announcements again? Or are those? Yes, I did. Uh, um, one minute announcements. <laughs> here we go. Do any councilors have any announcements? Oh, come on. No, we're not going to, we're going to, you know what? I'll announce at the next meeting I will have at least one one-minute announcement. So in preparation. <laughs> there you go, folks. Councilor Specker, at the next meeting later this month, we'll have an announcement. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's the end of the one-minute announcements. Uh, we come up now to the second reading of the uh, resolution. Uh, opposing the Northeast expansion of the Tennessee gas pipeline in Massachusetts. I'll accept the motion and put it on the floor. Second. Second. Any further discussion on this item? Councilor O'Donnell, do you have any other things that you want to add to this? The I don't think so. Okay. I mean, in the interim, since this was actually first proposed, a, a few other communities have signed on uh, in opposition to the establishment of this pi pipeline. And the Franklin Land Trust has also um, uh, presented a letter also talking particularly relative to the sensitivity of, of uh, uh, pristine lands that would be in jeopardy. And we would have no say should this actually go forward. Do you want to talk about that? Well, I, I mean, I, I, have, I have a separate point to make. Sure. Oh, that is a good one. Um, <laughs> But to tie it back to our budget hearings, just yesterday, um, we heard uh, uh, Dave Pomerantz, Director of Central Services, announced that, in fact, since 2010, North, the city of Northampton's uh, use of natural gas for heating has gone down anywhere between 25 to 28 percent. Um, to me, that just shows how we, we perhaps don't know enough about how our energy needs and certainly are not ready to 
say, we, yes, we need to build another extremely expensive pipeline across western Massachusetts and, in fact, ask the ratepayers of New England to subsidize. Um, it's the wrong direction for us to be going. And I'm happy that this resolution passed on first reading because it makes a statement that we need to go in a new direction. I, I would add to that, actually, Mr. Pomerant said that our overall expenditures on energy investment in municipal, uh, for municipal services is down between 25 and 28 percent. A significant cut, the fact that we're already committed to a uh, reduction of consumption. That, and, and as I will brag about again, we're the only five-star rated community in the United States. And based <clears throat> partly on that assessment and our, and our aggressive approach towards conservation and proving, by example, that uh, conservation trumps the establishment of pipeline systems and it's, it's not exclusive to this community. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I think the highlight of what Mr. Pomeran said about it was we've reduced our municipal dependency on oil because we have switched to natural gas. We have like a greenhouse at Smith Folk that still burns oil. And otherwise, we're burning gas. So I, would, I might ask a rhetorical question. You know, we, we don't like oil. We really don't like coal. We really hate nuclear. And it gets damn cold around here. <laughs> you know, what are we going to heat our houses with? Uh, <laughs> so in the Energy Commission, uh, we also heard that Northampton's uh, greenhouse gas footprint has dropped dramatically. I believe that was something like 28 percent. And a piece was the switch over to natural gas. Mm -hmm. However, it's also because the amount of solar energy, this takes into account not just the, the municipal use, but all citizens' use, the amount of solar energy now being produced in the city is starting to be an, an actual percentage that has some significance, and that will continue to go up. And one of the reasons not to build this pipeline is even in the, I, I said this last time, but I want to say it again, in their own report on this, it says that given the current state of conservation and the use of alternative energies, it doesn't even look like this state is going to need the gas that's being produced. And in fact, what it will do, it will undercut this state's current effort, which I believe is second in the country, on solar and wind to continue to develop those resources, which is what we need to do. So it's kind of a conundrum with the natural gas. Right now we're in a great direction. We're going well. This will, I think, is the right way to go. And as last time, I thanked you for bringing it up, and I thank you again. Well, the, the other point was the where this natural gas comes from. And uh, this is actually uh, fracked gas, which actually has its own associated um, dilatorious impacts on the environment that from where it's generated. And then consequently, building the pipeline also has impacts that we aren't that would have a lot of costs associated with it. It is not depriving or denying us natural gas while we are while we make this conversion and that we have already expressed and are playing out and performing uh, uh, an agenda of conservation that will probably reduce that with the purpose of reducing our our dependence on natural gas as well. So we are actually going we're using less natural gas than we used to and with the anticipation of using even less in the future. Uh, Councilor Don. Yeah, and, and furthermore, to build off Councilor Spector's comments and, and, and yours as well, um, I haven't seen a single guarantee from the company that proposes to build this that the end users are going to be primarily residents. And the, one of the biggest end users of natural gas are those who develop liquid natural, um, liquefied natural gas to export to Europe, which is a profitable venture. But it's the same old story, I think, of a, of a corporation coming in and promising the moon, really, this is going to make your, your heating bills, they're going to, it's going to cut them in half or, or something like that. I don't believe that. I haven't seen any guarantee um, to, to the contrary. So I agree. We can control conservation. We can control um, our investments in alternative energy. We can't control promises from a, a big company. In fact, we have really no promises. The only thing we can expect is they're going to be in it to make money for themselves probably at the expense of the actual residents of the planners. Any other comments or questions or? Okay. Um, all set? Roll call, please. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Abstain. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Spector. Yes. 
Councilor Yes. It passes in second reading. Um, I would ask for a motion for the approval of the minutes from May 15, 2014. So moved. To approve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Um, any reports? Of, we're at the section of the reports of committees, appointments, and elections. Um, we have before us an appointment for the city treasurer's office. Um, and it's, it's, this is uh, to be referred to ordinance. Uh, the appointment of Christine Bissell of 92 Bissell Road in Goshen. Um, and I would accept uh, so moved. to refer that Second. to ordinance. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions. Okay. Uh, next up, this is the reappointment reappointments of the Council on Aging, and this is also to refer to ordinance. Uh, we have Micah Hearn, 24th Street. Uh, the term to start April 2014, expire April 2017. Uh, John Kaczynski, Jr., 39 Lino Terrace. Um, the term to uh, start 2014, some, sometime in 2014, and expires April 2017. What does the F in parentheses mean? I don't know. Do you know what that means? Florence. Florence. Oh, it's Florence. Okay. Uh, and uh, Catherine Pecola service of Nine Butler Place and her term also to start April 2014, expire April 2017. I'll accept a motion to refer. I move so to refer to Committee on Rules, Orders, Appointments, and Ordinance. Second. A second. All those in favor of referring these three, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next up is uh, the appointments of the Council on Aging, and this is also to refer to ordinance. Uh, Diana Soller of 241 Jackson Street, uh, the term to start tw April 2014 and expire April 2017. Move to refer to um, rules, Take orders, it. appointments, and ordinance. It's been seconded by Councilor Adams. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next up before you is the uh, meeting minutes of transportation and parking from April 15, 2014. Accept a motion. So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> okay. I'll, we also have the minutes of the parking commission of the, uh, of, of the parking committee of the transportation parking commission uh, okay. from May 8, 2014. And there's. There's a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Now's the time. <laughs> we, this is going to be fun. We actually here comes the budget. We're now recessing for uh, finance committee. I am giving over <laughs> to Council Murphy. We have before us the entire municipal budget. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Councilor Murphy, you have the floor. <laughs> Thank you. Although, you know, the financial, there's more financial orders than there are things for finance. I'll wait for Pam to finish her consultation. That's okay. I think we're going to put it back on. Uh, Pam, can you call the roll of finance? <clears throat> Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Adams. Here. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Shera. So the first order we have is for Pulaski Park. Upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz and the Board of Public Works, <clears throat> in order to file and accept grants with and from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs for the Parkland Acquisitions and Renovations for Communities Program for Improvements to Pulaski Park. Whereas Pulaski Park is by far a community-wide asset and the preservation and improvements to this park are a city priority as evidence in the open space and recreation and multi-use trail plan 2011 through 2018. And whereas Pulaski Park is dedicated to park and recreational purposes under Mass General Law Section 45, Section 3, and the renovation of Pulaski Park 
guide in principle, guided in principle by the open space plan will greatly enhance this facility with improved infrastructure, outdoor public meeting space, path systems, site lighting, universal access. And the main focus of the plan is to renovate Pulaski Park to enrich the enjoyment of all residents and visitors to the city. The project costs and fiscal constraints prevent the city from proceeding with the renovations to the park. And whereas the park renovations are viewed as a project that might be implemented in a series of phases over time or as one project when fiscal resources became available with the intention of securing grant funding when and if available to assist in this effort. And whereas the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs is offering reimbursement grants to cities and towns to support the preservation and restoration of urban parks throughout the parklands or through the parklands acquisition and renovations for communities grant program, um, the, the PARC is a reimbursement program which requires the city to demonstrate that it has all the funds necessary to improve the park prior to state reimbursement. And now therefore be it ordered that the city council appropriates and authorizes the city treasurer with the approval of the mayor to borrow $1.5 million over 15 years under Mass General Law 44B subsection 11 and Mass General Law 44 subsection 8C or any other enabling authority for the purposes of improvement of parks and playgrounds on said property and the mayor be authorized to file on behalf of the city of Northampton any and all applications deemed necessary for the grants and or reimbursements from the <coughs> Commonwealth deemed necessary under PARC Act Chapter 933 Acts of 1970 as amend 77 as amended and or any others in any way connected with the scope of this article and the Northampton Board of Public Works acting as Park Commission and or Recreation Commission to be authorized to enter into all agreements and execute any and all instruments as may be necessary on behalf of the City of Northampton to effect said purchase. And the Mayor be and is hereby authorized to take such other actions as are necessary to carry out the terms, purposes, conditions of this grant to be administered by the Department of Public Works and or the City's Recreation Commission. And I think we have Mr. Fiden here. Mr. Fiden is not speaking on this one. It's a park, and Mr. Fiden is <laughs> speaking on it. It's deep every project, and there's some things, but mostly. Okay. Susan might, would be able to. You want to comment on this one? I'm not involved. Mm -hmm. Actually, the mayor, the mayor, unfortunately, is, and the mayor isn't here. Well, I might ask Mr. Fiden to comment on one thing because this comes up a lot in his other projects. That this is one of those where we're 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 authorizing this, but we're not actually going to expend the funds. If the, if the grants come through, it's going to be grant money. But if the grants don't come through, the project isn't going to go forward. That's correct. correct. They will be applying for CPA money, but that's not what's before you right now. But that's not what's before us right correct. now. Correct. Um, so any discussion in finance? No. Oh, sorry, Adams? I just want to say the mayor may be here when it comes to the full session. When, your question. when it comes back around. All right. Any other comment in finance? Um, I've, just, I've been following the preliminary plans, and it's very exciting what what we're looking to do in Pulaski Park. So this is a really wonderful opportunity for us and mm -hmm. very much no, support it. I was very encouraged when the legislature enabled CPA funds to be spent <laughs> on existing parks. You know, in the beginning you couldn't do that, but now you can. And, and it really is, is a wonderful thing. We were able to do good work down by the Bridge Street School and Lampert Park there and, and, and adding Pulaski Park, giving the resource of the pool of CPC funds to Pulaski Park, I think is very, very helpful. Oh. Uh, the the mayor has expressed to me that uh, um, this is, he wants to put this in the hopper so it's running parallel as the designs are being developed. Still, I mean, this, there's no fait accompli on the designs, but it's subsidized going further so there's no glitches that 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 money be available, and it also improves our chances for this money because we're fairly far along on, on, in the So process. it gets us in the gets us in the funding cycle as it soon as possible. Gets us in the queue exactly yeah. and allows for us to realize a new renovated park uh, sooner than later. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there any other discussion at all in finance or from anyone? So do we have a motion to give a positive recommendation to this? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Well, we don't have to. She's got our oh, yeah, wrong track. copy this time. Oh. Very streamlined. <laughs> and the next one is Fitzgerald Lake. There's a letter that came with that, and then. Okay, so the, the order is underneath the letter. All right. 
Uh, so this one is um, upon the recommendation of the Community Preves Preservation Committee order that whereas the Broadbrook Coalition submitted an expedited application for Community Present Act Preservation Act funding for priority invasive species removal in the 2014 growing season of approximately one acre um, within the Fitzgerald Lake Conservation Area and whereas the project will help to improve and preserve the health of Northampton's premier wildlife and conservation area by preventing the expansion of a threatening invasive wetland plant and whereas the project's control and removal of invasive plants meets goals established by the Northampton Open Space and Recreation Multi-Use Trail Plan and whereas the applicant has used these funds effectively in the past and whereas on May 24, 2014 the Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend $2,450 dollars and Community Preservation Act funds be used to support this project. Now therefore it be ordered that two thousand four hundred and fifty dollars be appropriated from the Community Preservation Act funding to the Fitzgerald Lake Invasive Plant Eradication Project and that the grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee, Committee the Mayor and the City Council. Specifically two thousand four hundred and fifty dollars is appropriated from the CPA budgeted reserves. We have a motion on this one? So moved. Sorry. I'd like to um, make right. a motion so, to recognize. But I bet Mr. is going to speak on this one. <clears throat> so this is a small project. CPA recommended past money to Broadbrook Coalition to deal with invasives, which you all approved. In their work, they found this area of Phragmites, which is growing very rapidly. And so they want to deal with it now while they can still do it at relatively low cost. Um, they would like you to add, do two readings if you're willing tonight the because main. that piece. The other thing is just we need one more small error in this. Because the charter, which we're still getting used to, um, this should actually be on the recommendation of CPC and the mayor. And that's going to be true for the next two ones as well. Councilor LaVarge. Yes. You know, Wayne, I, I did some research about this, this invasive plant, and it's unbelievable. It states on it actually about the natural environment. It's found on the edges of wetlands, but it also occupies the entire wetlands along the streams and ponds. So you can see why they need to get in there as quickly as possible. It also says it eliminates diverse wetland communities by taking over and pushing out diverse native plants and it provides little food or shelter for wildlife. And then they go on talking about that it can be removed by annually cutting before the end of July. Do you know anything about that? I don't know the details of how they're planning to treat it. I know they're working with a consultant, but I don't know the final work plan. For and they're also talking about herbicides are effective in short terms of four to five years. So has that been brought up? I know they've looked at it, I do, but again, I don't know the details of what they're actually doing on the site. Okay. But you can see why this has it's to be done. I mean, are they looking at doing this every year or every two years or because I, it's moved so quickly? It's I, I know they have a detailed plan. They're trying to do things that knock down invasives and they're not going to get rid of them all. But so they can, their priorities have been things which they can do most effectively so they don't have to come back every year. Okay. Also, Klein. Um, I'm concerned that we don't have more information about how this eradication is going to happen. And um, it's very hard for me to imagine uh, voting without that kind of information, you know, to give money to a, a process that isn't defined here. If, in fact, if there is a use of herbicides and pesticides, I would um, be very concerned and want more information about their long-term impact, their travelability, all of those kinds of things that we need to ask questions about around the use of uh, herbicides. So. I, I don't know the answer, so I can't really comment. And I do know this has gone before the Conservation Commission, who's all, who would share those concerns that they were comfortable with the treatment method. Right. But I can't tell you more but details. But it'd be nice if we could have that level of information ourselves. Yeah. That's right. Any other questions for Mr. Fiden or any other questions in finance? Hearing none, do you want to <coughs> send this to Council with a positive recommendation? Or just to follow up on Council Klein's question. Is there a, uh, are there minutes from the Conservation Commission that, that dealt with this uh, particular set that might give some I, I'm sure we can certainly send you, Sarah could send you tomorrow more information. I just, I don't, I don't have that with me now, but in some form or other, we don't have that information. So. If, um, and if we want to send this board to council, it'll get two readings, so we could have the answer by the time it comes around again. Because I don't think, nobody seems to object to eradicating the invasive species. It's a question of how. 
and we could certainly find that out before second reading comes around. Let's see. It's good. Well, we get, you know, to do that, we'd have to not have the second reading and to, to come around again. It's not in the letter. I just, <coughs> we're just looking at the letter. And I'm sorry. Uh, there is some information in this package about that. Um, so in their application. So um, June 2014, they'd cut with brush saws, so, so physically cut, and then regrowth would be treated with rodeo uh, in September 2014. But this, this would be, a, um, in essence, a paint-on treatment. So I think what people, makes people very nervous about herbicides and pesticides is when you're doing broad application as opposed to dripping it directly onto the stalks or painting it directly on the stalks, which seems to be what they're proposing. So then another, this is in wetlands, though, so it's That's not, correct. they're doing paint on, but it's clearly going into water sources. That's correct. So it's a little bit different when you're doing paint on, on land, where it's, it stays much more local, there's much more travelability. Right, right, which is why the rodeo is, is recommended here, because rodeo is designed for those kinds of setups. So it's your pleasure in finance. You want to send it to council to recommend one reading and have Sarah come and reassure us before we do the second reading? I mean, I'll, I'll move to send it forward to the council the proper recommendation. We can take up whatever to do with it there. Exactly. Me too. All right. Then all in finance, all in favor of sending it forward positive? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Upon the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee, order that whereas the City Council Order dated April 17 stated that 130000 be appropriated from Community Preservation Act funding to the City of Northampton for the Christopher Heights Assisted Living Affordable <coughs> Housing Project for creation of 43 affordable assisted living units. Specifically, 130000 is appropriated from the CPA Affordable Housing Reserve. Uh, that order was drawn up uh, upon an incorrect account. There, therefore, it be ordered that the $130,000 appropriated from the CPA Affordable Housing Reserve to the City of Northampton for Christopher Heights Assisted Living Affordable Housing Project is rescinded. Just from the wrong account, I assume. Do we have a motion in finance? Move to. Second. Second. Move it. Any other questions on this one? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <coughs> Just keeping. Uh, upon the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee, order that whereas the City of Northampton and the Grantham Group submitted an application for the Community Preservation Act funding for the Christopher Heights Affordable <laughs> Assisted Living Project, and whereas the project will provide 43 units of affordable assisted living in a new 83-unit assisted living residence at Village Hill with affordability restrictions to be held by the City of Northampton and the Department of Housing and Community Development. And whereas the master plan for redevelopment of the former state hospital includes assisted living, and whereas the Grantham Group has an excellent record of creating affordable assisted living in Massachusetts. Whereas in January, in January 2nd, 2013, the Northampton Community Pre Preservation Committee and the City Council awarded 120,000 Community Preservation Act funds to be used to support this project. And whereas on April 2nd, 2014, the Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend that additional 130,000 Community Pre Preservation Act funds be used to support this project to be utilized within the time frame created by the first application. And whereas the City total commitment of funds is very low per unit cost to develop a regionally and locally in demand type of affordable housing. Now therefore be ordered that 130,000 be appropriated from the Community Preservation Act funding to the City of Northampton for Christopher Heights Assisted Living Affordable Housing Project for creation of 43 affordable assisted living units and that the grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee, the Mayor and the Council. Specifically, 130,000 is appropriated from the CPA budgeted reserve. So this is the correct version since we rescinded the other one. Uh, motion to finance? So we have to make a recommendation to send the full city council. Any other discussion for the for the fix of the order? All in favor in finance? Aye. 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 Upon the recommendation of the Mayor and the Office of Planning and Sustainability, order that whereas the open space recreation and multi-use plan adopted or endorsed by the City Council and Planning Board, the Transportation and Parking Commission and seven other city boards recommends a comprehensive multi-use trail network including extensions and access points on land owned by National Grid, Mass Electric Company, and Pan Am Railroad, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and whereas past City Council orders have helped create 
our current 11 plus mile rail trail network and whereas additional acquisitions of fee interests, easement leases and other licenses will allow access ramps to the existing trail including connecting the city rail trail network on the west side of the train tracks to the state network on the east side of the tracks and providing access ramps to the rail trail along King Street and Edwards Square. And whereas the city and national grid, Massachusetts Electric Company, Pan Am Railroad and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts have been negotiating in good faith to come to an agreement to allow these connections and whereas no new appropriation is requested or required at this time. Now therefore it be ordered that the mayor is authorized to acquire by purchase or gift fee interest easements leases and or other licenses for development of the rail trail multi-use trail network on the prop uh, on the properties and in the locations uh, substantially is set forth on the following plans as those plans may from time to time be amended and in the following locations as those locations may have minor adjustments from time to time um, <clears throat> plan of land in Northampton in Northampton, Massachusetts, Hampshire County Registry prepared for the city of Northampton a proposed ramp to the Manhattan Rail Trail at the North Street Bridge dated July 10th, 2009 by Huntley Associates showing the proposed ramp onto the existing bike path from Edward Square. A plan of land in Northampton, Massachusetts, Hampshire Registry prepared for the city of Northampton easement plan dated December 11th, 2013 by Northeast Survey Consultants showing proposed easements for relocation and expansion of the existing bike path. A rail trail underpass under the active railroad line adjacent to, to the adjacent to west of immediately above proposed easement. A site plan prepared for Goggins Real Estate September 14, 2011, showing access to the existing bike path from King Street over land of Patrick Goggins and the existing access ramps or trails at the north end of Adair Place, at the south end of Blackberry Lane, and on the easterly side of Earl Street, and a new access trail on the north westerly side of the rail trail north of Route 10 rail bridge and south of the ice pond stream and that the city is authorized to accept and uh, expend grants donations and traffic mitigation funds for the purposes of acquiring such fee interests easements leases and or licenses and that the mayor is further authorized uh, to discontinue such existing rail trail easements on the above reference plan by Northeast Survey Consultants shown as existing easements to be discontinued when such easements are lo no longer needed for rail trail uses as part of any acquisition authorized herein. And then attached to it are just details of where these various uh, ramps and access points are. Um, do we have a motion? I'd like to recognize Mr. Biden. Biden. So, We've been negotiating with National Grid for a while. National Grid is the parent company of Mass Electric um, on a number of easements. Uh, we have a deadline from the Commonwealth to, it's the Commonwealth is going to be building the underpass between the existing rail trail network behind, basically behind Taco Bell and the state rail trail network. And they want to go to bid this summer. So that's the reason we've been sort of racing through to negotiate in time to, to meet the deadline. Um, and we haven't yet signed something with them, but we're very optimistic. This will give us the authority to do that. Um, I can walk you through each of the sites if that's useful. And can you put up that presentation? Um, so let me just walk, I'm gonna walk you from south to north. You have this in the package I passed out, and it'll be up on the screen in a second. Um, but the first site is immediately north of where the rail trail crosses Route 10. Um, there's, a, there's a bridge across Route 10, there's a large parcel of land to the left. If you remember, you approved CPA funding for us to buy that parcel of land to the left two meetings ago, I believe. Um, this would allow us, if we buy that land, to, to build a trail connection from the bike path up through that parcel. So that's the first piece. Um, the second one, if you go north, again, on your package, the second page, is there is an existing off-ramp at Earl Street. Um, so it's already there. We're not doing anything new. Um, but there's a 15-foot section which we actually don't have a license or an easement for. So the trail is already there. You can bicycle. It's been there for a couple of years. This is just sort of cleaning up those things and letting us get an easement for that trail. Um, the, the third one in the package is the bottom of page two and I passed out is at 79 King Street. This is the former Bank of America building. There's also an existing paved off-ramp from the bike path onto the Bank of America building. And so we'd like to get a license in essence to bless where the trail already is. 
Um, the next one is there at Edwards Square. Some of you have been on council for a while remember that ServiceNet gave the city an easement across their property behind the old armory building. And then there's the bike path, and in between, there's a 15-foot section, which is owned by National Grid. We'd like to get, again, get a license so that existing dirt trail through there is blessed and, and the public can use that, that piece. Um, the next one is the most complicated one. This is where be basically behind National Grid substation, electric substation, um, where trails come together. So we have a trail coming from the south, and then it gets behind the National Grid substation, and it cuts to the west. Um, we want to extend it north up to Walgreens, where there's already a trail, and we want to extend it east underneath the railroad tracks to connect to the state trail system. And so we would be getting new licenses for those connections. There's a section of the trail which we'd no longer be using, and so we'd be discontinuing that section of the trail. So let me just, I'm going to start at the beginning, but we'll go very fast, the ones I went through, just so I can point out where these things are now that's up on the screen. Um, You go down two slides. This one. So this is the area you don't see a lot here. It's a tiny piece. So you know, National Grid owns basically a right of way, which is 50 to 60 feet wide. We own an easement down the middle of it, which is 20 feet wide. So in most of these cases, we're just talking about a very small easement or license between the existing trail and the National Grid property boundary because otherwise we're sort of isolated in the middle. So this is the first one. You don't really see anything other than red, but this is immediately north of the Route 10 bike path bridge to let us cut in that direction, eventually do a trail all the way up to Ice Pond. Next slide. Um, this is the one I mentioned at Earl Street, which already exists. So you see in the air photo of the bike path, we just want to bless, again, that same 15 feet. So the city has an easement for the existing bike path. We own the property off Earl Street. There's that 15 foot gap we'd like to fill. Next slide. This is the Bank of America property. Again, Bank of America is part of the project, built a bike path that you see from the main rail trail to their parking lot. We need that license for that same 15 feet that crosses National Grid property. Next slide. This is the one at, at Edwards Square behind the ServiceNet Armory. Um, so there's an existing earthen trail there, which we hope to pave. Um, we already have the easement through service nest property. We already have the easement for the trail, the main trail. It's which that squiggly red line that we're talking about so we can build the new trail. Next slide. So this is the one that's most complicated um, because there's in essence three things involved. Uh, and the arrows sl slid, so please ignore those arrows. But on the right, you see an area that's brown, so sort of right in the bottom. The trail does a little squiggle there. And it makes a weird curve. If you bicycle, you may ask yourself why we have that re weird curve. The reason was originally the bike path was going to cross King Street and a bridge, 17 and a half feet above grade. To get to the bridge, we had to start going up at 5% slope. When we decided not to a bridge, it was too complicated to go back to National Grid. So we kept that right of way. But now we're trying to fix that to get rid of that extra jog in the trail. So we'd be discontinuing that land and then where the trail makes a sharp curve to the left, which is immediately south of Taco Bell, we'd be extending the trail north up to another trail at Walgreens um, and to the state rail trail on the right side. So this is the really important one. This is what's driving it all. The other ones are sort of small housekeeping while we're at it. Next slide. Um, just before you go. Yes. Back one, please. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing. Sorry. I'm not sure how I can get there. Uh, page, page up. Thank you. So, um, okay, so here's Acme, right? That's Acme Automotive? That's Acme Automotive, correct. So it comes down and, and crosses over. So this other jog that's right behind Stop and Shop, there. that doesn't exist right it now? It does exist right now. So, oh, okay, so you can come up and cut through the Stop and Shop parking lot. I'm, I'm following the line on the left that's side right. of the picture. So, so we basically have an express and a local path. The express path, which most people use, okay. is south of Acme, right? The local, which is only a summer path, because Stop and Shop stores their snow on it during the winter, right. basically circles around the Stop and Shop parking lot, okay. crosses King Street, and goes around Walgreens. The top one. 
That's the top one going yep. up around. Yep, that's correct. Walgreens. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. Yep. And so we'd be, what the green does, it lets us both connect together. So we'd be leaving where the trail is to the south, dropping down to about 10 feet below grade, and then dropping up to back to grade. And where we're 10 feet below grade, that's where the tunnel would be. Because this is all unfinished right now where the green That's is. correct. Okay. If you've been up there, you know, until about two months ago, it was shrubby and overgrown. As part of the tracks coming back, they've been cutting all the brush down there. So now suddenly you see it clearly. So. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Uh, next one. So again, these are back to the housekeeping piece. We have a couple of, in essence, existing walkways that people use that we don't actually have a right of way for. So at, from the bike path to Adair Place, there's an existing paved trail. That paved trail has been there 25 years. There's bollards. Everybody uses it. But we actually don't have a license for it. So we'd like to bless <laughs> what we're doing. Um, next slide. Same thing, not as improved, but this is at Blackberry Lane. This is sort of the back way into Jackson Street School. If you're coming from, to Jackson Street School from the, from the west, you don't want to go all the way down under Jackson Street. You want to get off at Blackberry. There's a very well-worn path. We've never paved it. It's not formally there, but people have been using it again for 25 years, and we'd like to acquire that, an easement for that 15 feet. Uh, next slide. No, oh, that was it. Sorry. <laughs> So any questions for Mr. Feidman on all of these tweaks? Yes. I just wanted to ask about um, <clears throat> the Edwards Square connection. Um, you mentioned that you plan to, to pave that slope that comes down. Okay. Um, are there other improvements that you uh, anticipate making at some point? For example, the kind of railroad tie looking pieces of wood that kind of hold up the slope, which are kind of in disrepair. So there's two sections which you could use that description. The section where the railroad ties are falling into the sidewalk, right. no, we're, we're 40 feet from that, and that's not an issue that we're dealing with. It needs to be addressed at some point, and that's, I think, service nets parking lot. There's another area within their parking lot, between their parking lot and a garage. In order to do that, we have to level a hill a little bit there. But the, the, the biggest area, which is obvious when you're on North Street, is separate from our project and will be affected. And so you, you believe, not to digress or anything, but you, you believe that ServiceNet owns that part right along the sidewalk? Um, I don't know exactly where the property boundary is. The general rule of thumb is the property boundary is the, the outside of the sidewalks. I can't do in that particular place. If I, can do that. I don't want to go down the rabbit hole on that, but you, the, one of the benefits of this easement will be to, to, to save that. Connection. That's correct. And, and we do hope, again, the separate approval process if you're accepting Edward Square, we do hope to put a contra flow bike lane on Edward Square, just that short distance from North Street up to the So any other questions and findings? Yes. And all in favor of a positive recommendation for this, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The next thing we have is some budgetary transfers uh, at the end of FY14. We're moving money around through the balance of the accounts. <clears throat> so it's a total of $54,114. Um, FIRE is moving $20,000 from permanent salaries, $5,000 to training and seminars, uh, $12,500 to EMS supplies, and $2,500 to firefighting supplies. Police is moving $15,170 from permanent salaries to police supplies. And then um, $3,500 is moving from vehicle insurance. $2,500 is moving from public employee liability. Uh, $5,250 is moving from actuarial services. And $7,690. $4 is moving from interest on notes. That money is going to permanent salaries, $2,060. Printing and mailing, $827. Permanent salaries, $172. That's in planning and development. Uh, planning and development telephone, $495. Mayor's office printing, $630. The collector's postage, $6,215. And treasurer's legal budget, $8,545. So it's a total of $54,114 that's moving from those one set of locations to another set to balance off the end of FY14. Make a recommendation to the second council. Any questions or discussions? We have the mayor here now. Do you have any questions? 
Hearing none, all in favor of the transfer and finance? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Uh, the next one is police, and I think Chief Sinkowitz talked to us about this last night relative to just moving his insurance settlement money over so that he can buy his new cruiser. They're supposed to be holding a end of the season one for him, and he'd like to he'd like to close that out. Order that in accordance with Mass General Law 44, Section 53 regarding insurance proceeds. The City Council appropriates $29,527 of insurance proceeds received from the property physical damage claim for a police cruiser damaged in March 2014 to the Police Department OOM account equipment for automobiles. Do we have a motion on this one? Yes, make a recommendation to full City Council. Second? Second. Second? Second. Okay. Any questions on this one? I think he talked to, <coughs> talked to us about it last night. And I think when we get to the general meeting, he wanted two readings on this so he could close the deal. All in favor, then, of a positive Aye. recommendation? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. This one's upon the recommendation of the Northampton Conservation Commission, Councilors Ryan O'Donna and Gina Louise Scarra. Order that, whereas open space recreation and multi-use plan recommends protecting the historic Mill River in Connecticut River floodplain, and whereas Carrie Purcell and Sandra Buda have agreed to sell three quarters of an acre on Dyke Road, uh, and whereas the purchase will allow the city to remove an unsightly billboard and close Dyke Road, which often attracts trash dumping, and whereas new, no new appropriation is required and no general funds will go towards this purchase. Uh, now, therefore, it be ordered that the Conservation Commission is authorized to purchase or otherwise acquire for conservation and passive recreation purposes, as provided by Section 6C, Chapter 40 of the General Laws, the Community Pre Preservation Act, and Article 97 of the amendments to the Massachusetts Constitution. Any fee, easement, or conservation restriction as defined, defined in Section 31 of Chapter 184 of the General Laws and any other interest in the above land and any donations for the purpose that the City Council hereby accepts such conservation restrictions and that the Conservation Commission is authorized to grant conservation restrictions on any of the land so acquired. And I think I forgot to tell you that the amount is $2,400 for this. I kind of blew right over that. So do we have a motion for this so one? In one second. second. Uh, any questions? I think oh, Mr. Fiden has departed, but... Uh, any questions on this one? Oh, and you're the sponsor, so you should speak to it. One of them. Um, I just like to point out, I, we asked that the billboard have a picture of the mayor and the council president waving and saying, well, <laughs> we want to retract people. <laughs> exactly. Don't. Yeah. Um, so we're going to leave the billboards? Yes. No, 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 no. But uh, the, the, we'll have the three well, of them. Anything we can do to reduce um, dumping in the meadows as uh, positive, I think. Now, that now has a couple of big Jersey barriers stuck there, right, to try and stop right. people from going down there. Huh? Yeah. Those aren't the most pleasant things to look at either. And I, my understanding is, you know, pedestrian traffic is still going to be able to get down there. It's just. So, any other questions in finance? All in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. And the last one. Upon the recommendation of the Northampton Conservation Commission and Councilor Mary Ann Labarge, order that whereas the open space and recreation multi-use plan recommends protecting key environmental resources such as the Brookwood Marsh Conservation Area and the city's only floating bog, and whereas Virginia Hassan agreed to donate, I think it's plus or minus one acre off Stone Ridge Drive, uh, an extension of Brookwood Marsh. Now, therefore, it be ordered that the Conservation Commission is authorized to purchase or otherwise acquire for conservation and passive recreation purposes as provided by S Section 8C of Chapter 40 of the General Laws, the Communi Community Preservation Act, and Article 97 of the amendments to the Massachusetts Constitution. Any fee easement or conservation restriction as defined in Section 31 of Chapter 184 of the General Laws or any other interest in the above land and any immediately adjoining land and that the city is authorized to accept and expend grants and donations for that purpose, and that the city council hereby accepts such conservation restriction, and that the Conservation Commission is authorized to grant conservation restrictions on any land so acquired. Got a motion? Make so, a motion. A second. All right. Any questions? Councilor Barge, you're the sponsor. You want yeah, to? Yeah, I want to talk about this. Um, I worked years ago with Keith Davis and many residents from Stone Ridge and Doug Cole. And um, the property, the neighbors got together and had bought and saved 
the conservation area on that site. And we also do have a trail there, too. And I had gotten a call about how this piece of property um, was really being looked at. And then I got a call back again, and yes, it was a definite. And this is a, a great assess by getting this acre and so whatever of property for that bog area. Any other questions or discussion? If I all in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. 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 And that's the end of our finance agenda. So, Councilor uh, Adams. I just wanted to say that um, for the ordinance and rules committee on Monday, it's going to be my proposal to um, no longer mandate that every financial transfer would have to go through the finance committee. And what that will do essentially is eliminate what we're doing here Correct. if it passes. So, uh, we just spent almost 40 minutes talking yep. about things that we're going to talk about again in the same meeting mm -hmm. and this comes after um, two hours of another meeting we've had and so I'm sure we're all happy to be here and to be doing this but I don't think we need the redundancies um, because there's no benefit from them we all have the same exact opportunity to weigh in at the later part in a later part of this meeting on the exact same issues so um, I just want to let the council knowing that that's going to come before the ordinance committee on Monday. It's sponsored by, sponsored by Paul Spector and myself, and um, it it will not eliminate any powers of, of the of the finance committee at all. It all have the, still have the exact same powers. It can meet outside of this committee for any municipal financial purpose whatsoever. And um, I just want the council to know that that um, we've had this discussion before, and I've followed up with a proposal that will be coming forth. Thank you. With that, a motion to adjourn finance. Thank you. We uh, reconvene or come out of recess in the general council meeting. And now we're getting to the business at hand. Um, and the mayor has made it. Um, Welcome back, Your Honor. I trust that was a, a fun event. So now this one's not quite so fun, but hey. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure we can whip up the same enthusiasm as graduates who've been put four years into, into schooling. But we we're, we have, um, we'll eventually get to the financial orders just referred to, but uh, let's get to the budget. We are now, for folks at home, we're talking about this document. You can find this document at NorthamptonMod.gov. Um, we are now voting on the budget. And first up, order that the sum of $80,645,732, which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year 2015 general fund balance budget that goes from July 1st, 2014 to June 30th, 2015, be appropriated for the purposes stated. To meet this appropriation, $1,723,409 will be raised and appropriated from parking meter receipts reserved, $10,000 from the Cemetery Perpetual Care Trust Fund, $5,000 from the Cemetery Sale of Lots Receipts uh, reserved, $1,195,525 from the Sewer Enterprise Funds, $568,327 from the Water Enterprise Funds, $102,401 from the Solid Waste Enterprise Funds, $243,969 from the Stormwater Enterprise Funds, $5,000 from the Wetlands Filing Fees, $1,500 from Waterways Funds, $12,376 from the Community Preservation Act Administrative Funds, $160,000 from Comcast INET Reserve Fund, $100,000 from energy rebates, $32,459 from the Reserve for the Police Station Debt Service, and $76,485,766 will be raised and appropriated. Um, I'll accept the motion. Move first reading. A motion for first reading. Is there a second? Second it. Okay, that's good because I really like to move with this. And that's <laughs> our, okay. Um, Councilor Spector. 
in case you weren't going to say it again, I think it's important for people watching to know that there have been budget hearings. This isn't the first time we've seen this. So if we happen to vote on this within the next short period of time, and people are wondering whether well, they just approved $80 million, $85 million, or whatever the exact figure is, in about 10 minutes or 15 or even an hour, that people have been looking at this. We've had this for a number of weeks. I, and I know that uh, the Council President already mentioned that, but I think it's important to mention again in case somebody just tuned in. And, and actually, uh, the Secretary uh, has reminded me that on the order of agenda, and as we approach these, the same way, the same order they proceed in the budget book, so that you should be able to follow along at home. The one comment about the hearings that we conducted, the public hearings, unfortunately, those were not carried live on NCTV, right. Right. so that they will be posted and available uh, for the public to see, whereas this is live. Um, but they, they will be available to see all aspects of, the, of those hearings. But. Just my point was something you had made before. It was just to clarify for the public that we have looked at this, not right. that they were necessarily able to see it on TV, but so they understood that this was not as, what, however long this process is tonight, that there was a lot more process that went on before this. I, I sense uh, an expression of optimism that this is going to be a quick process. It may not be quick, but... Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Any other comments on the item before us is presented to us on the floor? No other comments? We, uh, what the public was allowed to see was our public hearing, albeit it was um, um, not much of give and take there on the, on the, on the process of uh, we had only one member of the public participate in the, in the discussion. Um, the mayor is here, and I don't know if you want to take this opportunity at this point when we, as we introduce this part to speak any for, on further and beyond what you've said already, or if you want to repeat anything. You're not required to. Yeah. No, I just, again, want to thank the counselors for, um, for the work that you've been doing over the past several weeks to review the budget, um, and the meetings that you had with department heads and with the leadership of the two school systems. I think it's very helpful to, to really understand some of the underlying pieces of this budget. Um, obviously, I'm very pleased and proud of the work that uh, Susan Wright and, and the rest of um, uh, the team in our administration has done to put this budget together. And obviously, as I said in my budget address, it's uh, a much different um, a much different situation than we were facing a year ago, and, and a lot of that thanks goes to the to this taxpayers of Northampton um, who voted to support the Proposition 2.5 override, um, which has given us the ability to create some, some longer-term fiscal stability. Um, and uh, as I said in my budget address, one of, the, um, uh, one of the things that we're especially pleased about with this budget is that we are able to extend that stability plan for an additional two years. Um, and so uh, be able to maintain the services that, uh, that people rely on every day, um, be able to um, try to put back some of the things we've lost in our schools over the last several years, um, and, uh, and just in general uh, try to make sure that uh, we're able to serve uh, the residents uh, of this city uh, who've elected us to do that and to provide the day-to-day -day, uh, services that they need. So thank you for your consideration. I obviously can answer any questions that you have, um, but thank you. Any comments or questions? No. Nope. No? All right. On the first item, I'll ask for the secretary to call the roll. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Lamarch. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sherrod. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, if I could, I'd like to move. The enterprise budgets as a group, that would be two, three, four, and five. Two, three, four, and five. And, and if you'll allow me, I'll read, you read them all. But I want but to move is, them that to the is that the pleasure of the council to move those three enterprise funds as a group? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yep. No objection? Then, I will, then I'll proceed that way. The first one is uh, upon the recommendation of the mayor, this is the sum of $6,328,128 which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year, fiscal year 2015 sewer enterprise fund budget. And that runs July 1st, 2014 to June 30, 2015. Be appropriated for the purposes stated. To meet said appropriation, 
$88,128 to be uh, raised from sewer receipts and $150,000 to be made available from the undesignated fund balance of the sewer fund. Uh, and then it's broken down uh, the sewer enterprise fund. Uh, the sewer general sanitary is $1,300,475. Sewer treatment is $3,100,998. Sewer debt, $391,681. Sewer interest, $99,449. Sewer indirect costs, $1,195,525. And sewer reserve for capital projects, $150,000 for a total of $6,238,128. And I'll accept the motion. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, any discussion or questions on these? Uh, as Councilor Spector said, that we did, we had an opportunity <coughs> to um, have a presentation from the Department of Public Works, uh, the director and uh, chief engineer, and uh, also the head of roads was present too. And um, uh, we didn't talk all that much about the sewer, <coughs> the sewer enterprise fund, but um, these are the funds necessarily necessary to sustain ourselves to keep us from being getting neck deep in uh, sewage. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, any further discussion? Is there anything else? Councilor O'Donnell. Uh, we're doing these as a group, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, you're right. The whole group. I'm sorry. No, we'll the group. We're moving on to the next one. <laughs> This is upon the recommendation of the mayor, and this is ordered that the sum of $8,811,826, which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year 2015 water, water enterprise fund budget, um, to, to be appropriated for the purposes stated, to meet said appropriation, $6,611,826 to be raised from water receipts, and $2,200,000 be made available from the undesignated fund balance of the water fund and it breaks down as the water enterprise fund water general three million one hundred eighty thousand six hundred eighty nine dollars water treatment one million sixty six sixty six thousand four hundred eighty eight dollars water debt one million nine hundred fifty three thousand two hundred ninety three dollars water interest five hundred forty three thousand and twenty nine dollars Water indirect costs, $568,327. Uh, and water reserve, $1,500,000 for a total of $8,811,826. And then also for the last enterprise fund in this group, this is upon the recommendation of the mayor, the sum of $1,098,261, which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year 2015 solid waste enterprise fund budget, be appropriated for the purposes stated to meet the said appropriation, $417,000 is to be raised from solid waste receipts, and $681,261 to be made available from the undesignated fund balance of the solid waste enterprise fund. Broken down, the solid waste landfill, whoops, nothing. Solid waste, other waste management, $449,543. The solid waste debt, $524,000. Solid waste interest, $22,317. The solid waste indirect cost, $102,401 for a total of $1,098,261, and that's the three items of the enterprise funds. Is there a, there a storm water or something? We're doing number four. No, there's solid waste, and there's... There's another. Two, three, four, and five. Five. Oh, okay, so we're not done yet. Okay. Yeah. It's not over yet. Oh, no, it isn't. Um, this is storm. upon the recommendation of the mayor. Getting caught in mouth. Uh, the sum of $1,980,056, which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year 2015 stormwater enterprise fund ba uh, budget, be appropriated for the purposes stated to meet said appropriation. $1,980,056 is to be raised from the stormwater receipts. And that breaks down as the 
stormwater drain operations of one million two hundred eighty-five thousand seven hundred seven dollars. Thank you. Um, stormwater flood control operations three hundred seventeen thousand four hundred eighty. Stormwater debt sixty-six thousand four hundred and fifty. Uh, stormwater interest sixty-six thousand four hundred and fifty. Uh, stormwater indirect costs two hundred forty-three thousand nine hundred and sixty-nine dollars for a total of one million nine hundred eighty thousand fifty-six dollars. And this is upon the recommendation of the mayor. Oddly enough. Uh, Oh, no. Okay, we're done. We're done. That's it for those. Okay. We'll move on to yeah. the next one. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll questions, comments. So have we moved those yet? Do we yeah. move them as, as a group? Moved second. As a group Thank and you. second. I mean, how do you open this thing? <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. I don't know how um, this works. <laughs> it's Unscrew. Oh. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> okay. Any any questions? Comments? Nothing? Move the question. Question's been moved. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Speck? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. And Councilor Dwight? Yes. Next up is the to uh, is also upon recommendation of the mayor, and this is um, to establish a post employment benefits liability trust fund. So, ordered that whereas the legislature authorized the establishment of the establishment of other post employment benefits liability trust fund, and whereas the establishment of such trust fund would be advantageous to the city by setting aside funds for future liabilities. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council accepts the provisions of Mass General Laws, Chapter 32B, Section 20, and establishes in the fiscal year 2015 an other post employment benefits liability trust fund. The custodian of the fund shall be the treasurer of the City of Northampton, and the monies in the fund shall be invested and reinvested by the custodian consistent with the prudent investor rule uh, established in Chapter 203C. Um, I'll accept a motion. So second it. Uh, does anyone want the mayor to speak to this? Simple. Your Honor, would you come and uh, break this down a little bit, please? <laughs> Look, I'm sitting here by myself sometimes. I'll sit. Exactly. Um, so uh, I, I believe I referenced this in my uh, budget message. Uh, we also have a section set up in our uh, budget. There's this terminology that people now talk about called OPEB, um, which is other than post employee benefits, uh, which means um, uh, items that we are committed to paying our employees in the future other than pensions, which is primarily for the city of Northampton health insurance. Um, there's this wonderful organization, I'm being facetious, called uh, GASB, uh, which is the Government Accounting Standards Boards, which is a group, as far as I can figure, of government accountants who um, come up with all these different standards and regulations um, for, uh, for how accounting should be done. And essentially, um, what most um, businesses, what most governments at the state, federal, local level um, do is we sort of pay as we go. We know that um, we have retirees and we know that um, uh, we have promised them a certain level of benefits in the future and so we, we pay that out each year as part of our health care budget because the health care line item that you're voting for tonight is for both retirees and for active employees. What OPEB, um, what this concept of OPEB is about is that they really want to see that on your balance sheet. They want to see that um, it's a future liability. Um, I, we actually just had a conference call with our OPEB consultant and he made a really good analogy which is, um, or, or, or he gave a good reason for why someone, um, that may be a very useful piece of information and I know our bond rating agencies often now talk about OPEB liability, that's sort of the new buzzword, even in our most recent bond rating they mentioned that. And essentially um, someone could sort of look at your balance sheets, look at our budget today 
um, and say, you know, this particular city looks like it's good, it's sound, et cetera. But what it doesn't really show in our budget is this outstanding liability in the future. Um, and if for some reason there was some um, massive increase in, in the cost of health insurance, that really wouldn't be reflected. You couldn't really predict that in the budget. So what we've done is we've hired a consultant, uh, which is what most cities and towns are doing, that actually do an actuarial study of what our liability is. Um, and they look at you know our current um, retirees and they look at active employees as well and they can project out using the same kinds of actuarial um, projections that you know insurance folks use um, and they essentially can project what our uh, current OPEB liability is um, and I'm, you're all seated now so I can tell you what that number is uh, it's about hundred and nine million dollars um, is what that uh, sitting here today is what that is and again that's looking out into the future Future, um, paying people um, who maybe have retired or yet to retire, et cetera. And so what, um, what we are um, going striving to do is to set up an OPEB trust fund. Um, and it's not just a, this isn't a stabilization fund or a fund that I can then come to the council and transfer out of. This is a fund that's specifically for OPEB. Um, it's set up under this chapter of Mass General Law. Um, we're obviously going to begin very small, and this is a situation for most uh, municipalities, um, because to sort of for try to forward fund it all at once, uh, well, think about cutting $108 million out of this budget and putting it aside. Um, it's a $103 million budget. Uh, so um, so what our plan is to start it, um, to begin investing in it, and then we're making a commitment in the budget to increase that commitment every year. Um, again, uh, it's going to take us a while to get there. Um, and obviously, we're also at the same time uh, trying to pay our pension liability as well and have that system fully funded. Um, and then we're going to reach a point where we get that fully funded, then we'll be able to really tackle this OPEB. But really, what we want to show, particularly bond rating agencies, is that we are um, taking the step of setting up this OPEB trust fund and beginning to fund it. Um, and again, we will uh, continue to update these actuarial tables uh, every couple of years. Um, and uh, so that's the purpose of, of taking this step. Uh, several other communities have begun to do it. And again, if you read our last bond rating, even though they gave us a an upgrade and a, and a positive rating, one of the things they called out was this issue of other than post-employment employment benefit um, and the fact that we need to begin um, factoring that into our, our budgeting process. Uh, Councilor Adams? This is good. Do you know do you, do you know just off the top of your head when this law was passed? Is it, is it recent? It's not really a law. That's the thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's an accounting standards. Um, okay. you know, it's, it's set up by this. the legislature authorized. Yeah, and so the so the legislature did create this mechanism well, for that's, that's what, no, that's what that's what, oh, okay, it's not okay, like yeah. Fire. I don't know when it was adopted. I, I can't tell you that, mm -hmm. um, and I can tell you that the um, you know the Commonwealth is obviously in the same situation. They have a much bigger OPEB liability, <laughs> uh, and I would assume the federal government as well. Um, and again, it's a it's a it's a different way of looking. It's a different way of budgeting, but I think it's it's probably prudent, and there's a rationale behind it. Um, uh, again, because we want to be mindful as we're, you know, we're, we're making commitments in the here and now, but these commitments also extend out into the future. Um, and we just need to be mindful of what that number is and what the commitment is. Um, did you want to add anything uh, to that? Mm -hmm. That's right. So to. To, um, that was the number I was trying to remember. So we would have to right now, to be on a path to fully fund, fully fund right now, we'd have to put 2.6 million in, uh, in this budget. Um, and uh, again, it's, this is, um, in some ways, these numbers are really staggering. Um, uh, but again, we've been doing the same accounting method for the last, you know, and suddenly we're now making this shift. Uh, and so this is what we're going to do. Um, if you, it, in the part of your calculus for your projections, uh, your optimistic projections about uh, not having to uh, call for an override, um, was this part of the calculus as you were working on that? This is figuring out the, the subsidizing this this trust fund. And we are factoring in, but again, we're we're very you know again we we're, I think right now we're doing a hundred. 
we're going to add 25,000 each year, each year and build it up. Because um, we're also, as I said earlier, we're also, um, you know, we have a horizon th uh, for our pension system that we have to fully fund as well. So we're, um, that's happening simultaneously. And, and so, you know, our goal is to begin funding that. Um, and so it's factored into our current five-year plan. Um, and, and, and that's the purpose for doing it. And again, the next time we have a bond rating call, we want to be able to say to the rating agencies, you know, we've taken the feedback that you've given us and we've taken the step of setting up this, uh, of setting up this fund. We have, um, we have a firm that invests our other trust funds, uh, Bartholomew Investments, um, and they now manage these OPEB funds as well. So our, our, probably our plan is to just have them manage these as well as part of our other portfolio of, of trust funds. Right. The uh, prudent investor rule doesn't allow for any exciting investment. It's, this is, it's a very no. low return for the most part. But uh, Yeah, exactly. Very, very, very safe, very prudent, and um, as the name implies. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, yes, we won't be, uh, we won't be uh, you know, doing crazy. F You're not investing in Twitter. Uh, probably mm -hmm. not, no. Oh. Um, any further discussion? Well, I should get shares, probably. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you should, you should, you're entitled to that. I think you earned them by usage. Uh, any further discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Schiller. Yes. Councilor Speck. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Kyle. Yes. Councilor Blake. Um, go ahead. Okay, so I would like to. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. What was I talking? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. In Council Plan. Yes. I should pay attention. Yeah, okay. Pay attention to the clerk. Uh, Council Murphy. Yeah, I would like to move the revolving funds, which would be number 7 through 26 as a group. I mean, the president will still read them, but we'll move them all together. I'll, I'll still read them. 7 through 26. I want to look at those. Is, it, is that. It's more. 7 through 26, all the revolving funds. Is that the pleasure of the council? <coughs> yeah. uh, yes. Marianne, <laughs> still, you're, I'll, I'll wait for Council LaBarge to see if she. All the revolving funds? Correct, yeah. 7 to 26 on the agenda. Here's your opportunity. Mm -hmm. You're okay with that? Okay. <laughs> so I'm about to read to you <laughs> a bunch of revolving funds. Uh, about 19 orders here, so. <laughs> Uh, this is upon the recommendation of the mayor. <clears throat> Whereas the Northampton Energy and Sustainability Commission, uh, through administering energy policy and sustainable Northampton plan and the city's climate change protection commitments, has and will continue to identify and secure significant revenue from renewable energy certificates, and the NESC uh, continues to champion increased levels of energy efficiency and energy resource sustainability and guard against the effects of energy resource disruption or depletion and climate change throughout the city. And whereas the City Council, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53E1-2 <laughs> or half, uh, may authorize the establishment of a, of a revolving fund for the Northampton Energy Sustainability Commission for such revenue generated by the city energy improvement projects. Now, therefore, it be ordered that the City Council hereby authorizes an energy and sustainability revolving fund in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half for FY 2015. Receipts received but not expended in FY 2015 shall be carried over to FY 2016 that this fund is reauthorized for the fiscal year 2016 by the City Council. Said receipts will include payments from the sale of renewable energy certificates and renewable energy or greenhouse gases, for example, carbon credits uh, or other emission credits and utility rebate payments, requests for which will be pr presented to the Mayor for approval on a project-by-project -project basis. Receipts may also include gifts from individuals and organizations. Expenditures may be made to pay materials, expenses, and contracted services uh, associated with projects and programs and policies that increase levels of energy efficiency and energy resource su sustainability and guard against the effects of energy resource disruption or depletion 
and climate change in all of Northampton's public and private sectors, for example, municipal, business, commercial, residential, architectural, and institutional. Consistent with the goals of the Sustainable Northampton Plan, the City's climate change protection commitments and other City plans or goals. The Director of Central Services, with the approval of the NESC and the Mayor, shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purposes. No further appropriation shall be required, provided, however, that no expenditures shall be made in excess of the balance of the fund, nor shall total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed the sum of $100,000. So that's the first one. Uh, this is upon the recommendation. This is the fire department, whereas the fire department maintains the ability to respond to and manage the mitigation of any release of hazardous materials and is authorized by the Northampton Code of Ordinances to bill responsible parties for the costs of responding to an incident involving the release of hazardous materials and whereas the City Council, in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53E and half, may authorize the establishment of a revolving fund for the Fire Department for FY 2015 for maintaining an appropriate response readiness. Now, therefore, be ordered that the City Council hereby authorizes a Fire Department hazmat revolving fund in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53 and a half for FY 2015. Receipts received but not expended in FY 2015 shall be carried over for FY 2016 if this fund is reauthorized for uh, 2016 by the City Council. Expenditures may be made for the support of the HAZMAP program, including the purchase or replacement of materials, equipment, protective gear, vehicle repair and maintenance, preparedness, training activities, and for any purpose in connection with the HAZMAP program, which the Fire Chief may find appropriate. The Fire Chief shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purposes. No further appropriation shall be required, provided, however, that no expenditures shall be made in excess of the balance of the fund, nor shall total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed the sum of $65,000. Oops, sorry about the mic. Uh, upon the recommendation of the Mayor, the Board of Public Works provides construction services for the granting agencies and other third-party vendors, and whereas the City Council, in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half, may authorize the establishment of a revolving fund for the Board of Public Works to, for FY 2015, for the operation of a construction services revolving fund. Now, therefore, be ordered that the City Council hereby authorizes a Department of Public Works construction services revolving fund. And that, as I said before, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53, E and a half, for the fiscal year 2015. Receipts collected from departmental billing to granting agencies and other third parties for labor, overhead, equipment, and material costs for the provision of construction services by the departmental personnel shall be credited to this fund. Receipts received but not expended in fiscal year 2015 shall be carried over to fiscal year 2016 if this fund is reauthorized for fiscal year 2016 by the City Council. The Director of the Department of Public Works or the Board of Public Works shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purposes. No further appropriations shall be required, provided, however, that no expenditures shall be made in excess of the balance of the fund, nor shall the total of expenditures for the fiscal year exceed the sum of $85,000. Whereas the Board of Public Works has instituted a cross-connection program which generates certain revenue through the application testing and other fees in support of the materials, equipment, training, educational activities, and technical assistance used in the operation of the program, and I'm going to skip this whereas because it's the same damn whereas that's going to show up every time, but though it's, it is in accordance with Mass General Law. Uh, now, therefore, be it ordered that the City Council authorizes a cross-connection program revolving fund in accordance, of course, with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half for fiscal year 2015. Receipts from the fees generated by the cross-connection program shall be credited to this fund. Receipts received but not expended in fiscal year 2015 shall be carried over to fiscal year 2016 if this fund is reauthorized for the fiscal year 2016 by the City Council. Expenditures may be made for the following purposes. Support and or expansion of the cross-connection program, including, but not limited to, purchase of equipment and materials, training costs, including fees for uh, certification or licenses needed in connection with the program, technical and other consultant services included, but not limited to engineering and plumbing, educational programs to inform consumers about the program 
including publicity and informational materials such as brochures and posters. Uh, uh, yeah, and posters. Uh, the directors of the Department of Public Works or the Board of Public Works shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purposes. No further appropriation shall be required, provided, however, that no expenditures shall be made in excess of the balance, uh, the balance of the fund, nor shall total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed the sum of $75,000. Stop me if I'm losing you. Okay. This is uh, upon the recommendation of the mayor. Whereas the Northampton Council on Aging accepts fair donations for, and that's F A R E, donations for transportation services to support transportation programs for the Northampton Council on Aging, and, um, and of course, in accordance with Mass General Law. Now, therefore, be ordered that the City Council hereby authorizes a Council on Aging transportation revolving fund. Um, Receipts collected as fair donations or any transportation program donation shall be credited to this fund. Receipts received but not expended in 2015 shall be carried over for, for FY 2016 for this fund, is, uh, if this fund is reauthorized for <coughs> FY 2016 by the City Council. Expenditures may be made for acquisition, vehicle repair, and maintenance, gasoline, mileage reimbursements, contracted services, salaries, stipends, and other expenses directly related to the operation of the transportation of the transportation services by the Council on Aging. The director of the Council on Aging shall be authorized to expend from this fund for the stated purposes. No further appropriations shall be required provided, however, that no expenditures shall be made in excess of the balance of the fund, nor shall total expenditures for the year exceed a sum of $50,000. Upon the recommendation of the mayor, the Northampton Council on Aging may charge program activity fees, accept donations, and raise funds through community service fundraising events in support of NCOA programs, activities, and uh, services, and the City Council, of course, in accordance with Mass General Law. Uh, now, therefore, be it ordered that the City Council hereby authorizes a Council on Aging NCOA Activities Revolving Fund, and that, as I said, in accordance with Mass General Law, for uh, FY 2015. Receipts collected from fundraising donations and program activities shall be credited to this fund. Receipts received but not expended in FY 2015 shall be carried over for 2016 if this fund is reauthorized for FY 2016 by the City Council. Expenditures may be, ma may be made to pay for the Council on Aging programs, activities, and services including salaries, stipends, and employee benefits. The Director of the Council on Aging shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purposes. No appropriation shall be required, provided, however, that no expenditure shall be made in excess of the balance of the fund, nor shall total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed a sum of $90,000. Also upon the recommendation of the Mayor, the Northampton Council on Aging has a saleable merchandise in the Northampton Senior Center gift shop, which is available to customers of the Senior Center and the community at large, and of course it conforms to Mass General Law. And it, now, therefore, be it ordered that the City Council hereby authorizes a Council on Aging gift shop revolving fund, once again according to law. Receipts collected from the sales and proceeds shall be credited to this fund. Receipts received not, but not expended in FY 2015 shall be carried over for FY 2016 if this fund is reauthorized for FY 2016 by the City Council. Expenditure may be made to pay for gift shop fixtures and merchandise, sales tax, contracted services and services including salaries, stipends, and employee benefits. The Director of the Council on Aging shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purpose. No further appropriation shall be required, provided, however, that no expenditures shall be made in excess of the balance of the fund nor shall the total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed a sum of $20,000. Upon the recommendation of the mayor, whereas the Northampton Council on Aging receives cash payments for meals, assorted meal preparations, and other refreshments from the Northampton Senior Center Food Services Program, including the coffee shop and the City Council in accordance with Mass General Law, now therefore be ordered that the City Council hereby authorizes a Council on Aging NCOA Food Services Revolving Fund in accordance with law. Receipts collected as payment for meals, assorted meal preparations, and other refreshments shall be credited this fund. And as usual, all receipts that are outstanding uh, but not expended can be transferred to the next fiscal year provided the City Council approves. Expenditure may be made for acquisition of uh, kitchen equipment and supplies, meals, uh, meal taxes, food, 
contracted services, salary stipends, employee benefits, and other expenses directly related to the operations of the food services program by the Northampton Council on Aging. The director of the Council on Aging shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purpose. No further appropriation shall be required, provided, however, that no expenditure shall be made in excess of the balance of the fund, nor shall total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed a sum of $50,000. This is upon the recommendation of the mayor. The Northampton Council on Aging receives donations and generates revenue from advertising on the website, electronic bulletin board, and in senior public, uh, publications created and distributed by the council. And of course, the city council, in accordance with Mass General Law, has uh, therefore be it ordered <laughs> that the city council hereby authorizes the Council on Aging, NCOA, Senior Publications Revolving Fund, once again, according to law, the receipts, of course, will be collected for uh, advertising and the council publications and donations shall be credited to, to this fund. Uh, and once again, receipts received but not expended shall be carried over for FY 2016, subject to council approval. Expenditures may be made for contracted services, salary stipends, employee benefits, printing postage, advertisement, office supplies, and other expenses directly related to the creation and distribution of senior publications by the Northampton Council on Aging. And again, the director on the Council of Aging sh on Aging shall be uh, authorized to expend the fund for the stated purposes and no further appropriation shall be required, provided, however, that no expenditures shall be made in excess of the balance of the fund, nor shall total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed a sum of $50,000. Boy, the Council on Aging is very busy. Uh, whereas the Northampton Council on Aging receives revenue generated through promotion of travel opportunities for residents and memberships in the travel club. Uh, according, uh, under general law, the, the uh, now therefore be ordered that the City Council hereby authorizes a Council on Aging NCOA trips and travel revolving fund in accordance with the law. Um, as usual, the receipts collected for the trip and travel opportunity shall be credited to this fund. Receipts but not expended will be carried over. Uh, expenditures made for, <coughs> uh, for contracted services, salary stipends, employee benefits, admissions, reservations, postage, publicity, travel refreshments, office supplies, and other expenses directly related to the promotion and implementation of travel opportunities sponsored by the NCOA and the director of the Council on Aging shall be authorized to expend the fund uh, from the fund for the stated purposes. Um, no further appropriations shall be required. Uh, of course, however, unless they may not exceed the balance of the fund, nor shall total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed a sum of one hundred thousand dollars. Excuse me for a second. Thank you. I don't know which number we're up to yet, but is anyone keeping track? Someone's yep. going to stop me when we get to the keeping point track. where we're finished with the revolver. We're up to 17. I'm up to 17. <laughs> Only 10 more to go. <laughs> All right. The Northampton Recreation Commission has instituted athletic uh, league fees, which generate revenues to support athletic league activities conducted by the Recreation Department. And of course, in accordance with Massachusetts general law, now, therefore, be it ordered that the City Council hereby authorize a Recreation Department Athletic League Fees Revolving Fund. And, uh, receipts from the fees charged for athletic fields should be credited to this fund. Um, once again, they will be any uh, fees, not any revenue not expended will be carried over. Expenditures may be made to pay salaries, employee benefits, expenses, and contracted services required to operate athletic leagues for city residents supervised directly by the rec department. The director of the rec department or recreation department shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purposes. No further appropriation shall be required provided, however, no expenditures shall be made in excess of the balance of the fund, nor shall total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed a sum of $230,000. Whereas the recreation department operates the JFK Family Aquatic Center and has instituted user fees, which generate revenues to support the activities of the center, uh, the city council in accordance with Mass General Law. Now, therefore, be it ordered that the city council hereby authorizes the establishment of a revolving fund 
JFK Family Aquatic Center in accordance with law. Uh, receipts from the user charges shall be deposited to said fund in support of maintaining, equipping, and operating the JFK Family Aquatic Center. Uh, receipts, of course, received but not expended in FY 2015 shall be carried over to 2016. The director of the rec department shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purposes. No further appropriation shall be required, provided, however, that, no, that the expenditures should not be made in excess of the balance of the fund, nor the total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed $120,000. Whereas the Northampton School Department has instituted uh, transportation fees, which generate revenue to support the transportation students, uh, once again, according to law, and abiding by law, now therefore be ordered that the City Council hereby authorize the Northampton School Department Transportation Revolving Fund. Um, and once again, the receipts received but not expended carry over into 2016 uh, subject to approval. Expenditures may be made to transportation expenses and contr contracted services required to operate the transportation system maintained directly by the Northampton School Department. And the superintendent of schools shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purposes. No further appropriation shall be required, provided, however, that no uh, expenditures shall be made in excess of the balance of the fund, nor shall the total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed the sum of $175,000. Whereas Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School uh, farm generates funds as a result of the sale of farm products in support of the operation of the farm. Once again, under law, now therefore be in order that the City Council authorizes a Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School farm revolving fund. It, um, the, once again, receipts received but not expended in the fiscal year 2015 shall be carried over. Uh, expenditures may be made to pay salaries, employee benefits, vehicle repair, and maintenance, gasoline, expenses, and contracted services uh, directly related to the operation. The superintendent of the school shall be the authorized, shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purposes. No further appropriation shall be required, provided, however, that no expenditures shall be made in excess of the balance of the fund, nor shall the total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed the sum of $200,000. <coughs> Whereas the Board of Public Works has instituted a tourism directional sign program which generates certain revenue through fees uh, uh, assessed to businesses uh, to provide, not to provides, but to provide signs on city streets. And according to law, now therefore it be ordered that the City Council authorizes a tourism directional sign program revolving fund, or TDSPRF in accordance with the law. Uh, receipts generated from the fees assessed to the businesses that request and receive approval for tourism directional signs in the city of Northampton shall be credited to this fund. Um, receipts received but not expended in fiscal year 2015 shall be carried over. Expenditures may be made for the following purposes. Support for the work of the tourism directional sign program, including, but not limited to, Materials, supplies, equipment, and labor for the erection and maintenance of signs on city streets. The director of the Department of Public Works or the Board of Public Works shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purposes. No further appropriation shall be required, provided, however, that no expenditures shall be made in excess of the balance of the fund, nor shall the total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed the sum of $20,000. Whereas the health department wishes to establish a public health nursing revolving fund to provide financial resources for the delivery of public health nursing activities. Um, and whereas such a fund will enable the health department to proactively respond to community health issues. And whereas reimbursement from the insurance companies for the cost and administration of vaccines and fees associated with tuberculosis testing and patient management will generate revenues. Uh, and whereas the City Council under Mass General Law is authorized, now therefore it be ordered that the City Council authorizes a public health nursing program revolving fund in accordance with the law. Receipts generated from uh, reimbursement from insurance companies for administration and cost of vaccines and fees associated with tuberculosis testing and patient management shall be credited to this fund. And guess what? Uh, receipts that are received but not expended in fiscal year 2015 actually transfer over to the next year. 
Uh, expenditures made it may be made for the following purposes: support for the work of the public health, uh, <clears throat> the public health nursing program, including but not limited to the purchase of vaccines and other pharmaceuticals, medical office equipment, uh, professional development, continuing education for nursing staff, contract staff, and associated education and outreach materials. The director of that of the health department shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purposes. No further appropriation shall be required, provided, however, that no expenditure shall be made in excess of the balance of the fund, nor shall the total expenditures for fiscal year exceed the sum of $20,000. My voice is going to haunt all your dreams. We're past that. None of you are dreaming right now. We're past that. Yeah. You're riveted, I'm sure. Um, whereas the city of Northampton has undertaken a project to renovate and lease space in the James House, and said project has generated certain <laughs> revenue through lease payments and building use fees, and whereas the city of Northampton wishes to use these receipts to offset the cost of maintenance of said James House and debt service for said properties, and of course, in accordance with Mass General Law, now therefore it be ordered that the city council authorizes a James House revolving fund. Uh, with receipts from the fees generated by the lease of the James House shall be credited to this fund. Receipts received but not expended shall carry over into FY 2016. Expenditures shall be made for the following purposes. Maintenance of the property, including but not limited to salaries, employee benefits, equipment, supplies, materials, repairs, utilities, plowing, landscaping, and capital expenditures, printing, advertising, signage, and other costs debt service for loans and bonds issued for the renovation of the James House. The Director of Central Services shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purposes. No further appropriation shall be required, provided, however, that no expenditures shall be made in excess of the balance of the fund, nor shall total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed the sum of $75,000. <sighs> Whereas the health department wishes to establish a public health sharps disposal revolving fund to provide financial resources to ensure proper disposal of needles, syringes, and other and or lancets. Uh, whereas such a fund will enable the health department to have sharps disposal program that will offer that will be offered to Northampton constituents and business owners who generate sharps. This program is to help reduce and or eliminate the amount of sharps that end up in a household trash or landfills. And also, the council is authorized under general law, Mass General Law, to establish this. Now, therefore, it be ordered that the city council authorizes a sharp, dis sharp disposal program revolving fund uh, with receipts generated from the sale of the approved needle disposal containers. Revenues from the sales will cover the cost of sharps disposal containers, communi uh, com community education material, and other medical office equipment needed for the program. Receipts received but not expended, of course, carry over. The director of the health department shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purposes. Um, they can't exceed the balance of the fund, uh, and nor uh, any expenditures that might total over the amount of $15,000. <coughs> Whereas the Public Safety Dispatch Center provides alarm monitoring services to private businesses and receives revenue for pro uh, providing the service. And whereas such a fund will enable the Public Safety Dispatch Center to provide alarm monitoring activities and, providing, and provide funding for support of the operations of the dispatch center. And of course, we're authorized to establish this account under Mass General Law. Now therefore be ordered that the City Council authorizes a Fire alarm monitoring program revolving fund in accordance with the law. Revenues will be generated from providing alarm monitoring services and will be pay, <laughs> used to pay salaries, employee benefits, equipment repair and maintenance expenses and contracted services directly related to the operation of the Public Safety Dispatch Center. Okay, I almost, almost ran out of breath. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, the, the defibrillator is humbling thing, here, right? Yeah. It's, okay. Um, uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Receipts received but not expended, of course, carry over. The director of dispatch, in consultation with the chief of police and fire chief, shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purposes. Of course, no further appropriations <laughs> shall be required. And of course, no expenditure should exceed the balance of the fund. And nor should they exceed the sum of $45,000. Whereas the DPW reuse 
Committee uh, wishes to promote sustainability and to reduce and or eliminate the amount of useful material that ends up in household trash, landfills, or incineration facilities. And whereas such a fund will enable reuse, the Reuse Committee to operate a swap shop, promote events, and conduct okay. workshops aimed at waste reduction. Okay. And whereas revenues will be generated from the voluntary contributions, fundraising efforts, grants, and businesses, uh, business and educational other institutional sponsorships. Um, and of course, we are authorized to do this. Uh, now, therefore, it be ordered that the City Council authorizes the DPW Reuse Committee Revolving Fund in accordance with the law. Revenues will be generated from voluntary contributions, fundraising efforts, grants, business, educational, and other institutional sponsorships. Allowable expenditures will include advertising expenses, tipping fees, swap shop operating expenses, office supplies, uh, expenses related to conducting workshops, fundraisers, uh, and public events. Receipts uh, received but not expended carry over into 2016. The director of the Department of Public Works in consultation with the Reuse Committee shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the state purposes. And of course, it shall not exceed the budget, nor shall it exceed the sum of $5,000. Uh, was that all? No. That was Sorry. it. Did I miss one? You want me to no. read something more? That's not it. Eight through 20. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I just didn't hear you. Know, actually, last one that you read, there was a question about whether. No, she didn't hear it because she was sitting action. over there. So that's not a type. The typo, no, it's $5,000. It was, this was discussed. Was an increase from two? From yes. In fact, actually, when this first came up, we discussed that, realizing that, one, they wanted that much more money and they had access to that much more money. And it made more sense. To expand the appropriation amount, that uh, the, the the high end for their their expense. The only question. Any other questions relative to the things I just read? <laughs> and you may have remembered about a half hour ago. <laughs> uh, um, thank you for actually for recommending that we take <laughs> as a group. As a group. I guess it's okay. I mean, um, sorry. I just have a, a question uh, about the process, just for future reference. Yeah, are we re required to read each of those financial orders in their entirety? No. Okay. So for, mm -hmm. for, for next time, we, we have done it. For, we have done it as a courtesy and in the interest of. I've done it as a courtesy and in the interest of transparency and discussion. Frequently in the past, what we've done is just read kind of a total. The snippet and the total, and for the most part, the the public's awareness or access to the, these, these revolving funds, which are critical, actually, these are huge. Mm -hmm. um, their awareness of these projects are not, not they only come up when they come up here, when they come here and they're, and they're making requests. Mm -hmm. One request would be if you could eliminate the boilerplate material, even at the request of the state, and just the basic stuff, because then it'll get right to mm -hmm. No, I think I, I have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Council Murphy. And certainly, I mean, for second reading, we could, oh, could we could rave full reading next time around and just say, please read us what the account is in the total amount. And what? I think we'll remember. <laughs> I'll remember till like next year. This is now committed to video, really, really riveting video for for <laughs> the citizens, <laughs> or it could be marketed as a sedative. <laughs> so, <laughs> but there could be a reference. I mean, in terms when it comes to reading for the next time, right? Well, there, we could, we, we, we could mm -hmm. remind people mm -hmm. that they could read. They could just do that. Yes. The sessions for tonight. Absolutely. For right. Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and I should point out these documents are available on the website. Mm -hmm. Yes. The entire. Your Honor. I just was curious. You read to twenty six. Um, I'm assuming. I just stopped those are the revolving funds. We just said the revolving funds, and then we'll. Yeah, we got a way. Is don't go, don't go home yet. <laughs> There's more riveting television to come. No, we're done. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> we got to vote on these, though. Wait, folks. Now, how much would you pay? All right. Uh, any other further questions relative to the revolving funds? I'm going to ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Call on. Those is, uh, of the items as a group that, uh, for the revolving funds, which are items uh, seven to twenty-six, seven through twenty-six. Seven through twenty-six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Sherrick. Yes. Councillor Spector. Yes. Councillor Adams. Yes. yes. Councillor Kearney. Yes. Work out. Councillor White. Yes. Councillor Conn. Yes. Councillor Navarro. Yes. Um, I believe Council Murphy wants to move another group. I know, I'm all I'm all over. You're moving another group? Are you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I would uh, like to move the two work off programs the senior work off program and the veterans work off program 27 and 28 as a group. That's okay. That's fine. And I would actually volunteer to read the orders if the council president would like a break. No, I'm on a roll. You're going to roll? There's a lot more to come, you know. I know. I just mm -hmm. got to get to wave, where we were. Wave, wave boilerplate reading. With the waving the boilerplate. Yeah. Let, me, let me state. With the monarch the, note version I will, of. I will, the boilerplate essentially says that this is allowable under a um, match on the law. Yes. And the requested in there. Oh. That's where we are. That's where we are. Okay. Excellent. Okay. All right, this is uh, upon the recommendation of the mayor, and you'll recall the discussions relative to these uh, during the past year. Uh, the, whereas the legislature authorized the establishment of a program that provides for property tax liability reduction in exchange for volunteer services <coughs> for persons over the age of 60, um, and whereas the city has the power to create local rules and procedures for implementing what will be known as the senior work off abatement program. Now, therefore, be it ordered that the City Council hereby accepts the provisions of Mass General Law and establish, uh, establishes in fiscal uh, year 2015 a senior <laughs> work off abatement program to allow persons over the age of 60 to volunteer to provide services to the city. And in exchange for such volunteer services, the city shall reduce the real property tax obligations of such persons not to exceed $1,000 per year. And this is number two. Wow, you did the same one. And this is, uh, and as I said before, the same deal about the legislature. Uh, uh, <coughs> therefore, be resolved, the city council hereby accepts the provisions of the law of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 59, Section 5N, and establishes in the fiscal year 2015 a veterans work off abatement program to allow veterans to volunteer. To provide services to the city and in exchange for such volunteer services, the city shall reduce the real property tax of value, uh, obligations of such persons not to exceed $1,000 per year. They've been moved as a group. Is there any discussion on this point? It's a program the mayor has talked to us about, and actually, it's a, it's a nice thing. It's a, it's actually a great idea to give people an opportunity to be reengaged back in their community and participate in the community at the same time. Uh, relieve themselves of a thousand dollar burden, which could be onerous for somebody on a fixed income. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, I was just going to add too that um, stay tuned. Well, we were first of all waiting to see how this vote went tonight, but we will be releasing some details tomorrow about the program. Uh, we've been developing application forms and and developing the the process for it. We've also been. Um, reaching out to city departments uh, to uh, uh, identify city departments that would be taking, that would take on these volunteers to work in the departments. And uh, so all of those things are in place. And so pending the outcome of tonight's vote, uh, we're going to be putting out some information about that starting tomorrow uh, so that people can begin to fill out the paperwork and we can begin to do interviews in advance of July 1st when the program will be implemented. You mean pending the second reading? You're, you're correct. Right. Yes. And uh, Councilor Adams? Yeah. Is there going to be a limit to how many seniors or, or veterans per household qualify? Um, I believe it's, I believe, uh, I believe we, uh, I have to, I was trying to remember that. I believe we do have a, a, a household limit. I think we do have a one per household Ooh. limit on the abatement yeah. process. Yes, we do. For um, property. Exactly. And so, um, and we're projecting initially, uh, you know, we have put funding aside for 30 slot, 30 $1,000 abatement. So we're uh, targeting right now 20 seniors and 10 veterans uh, in terms of the program itself. So, um, but again, more details to come tomorrow. We're going to put out a bunch of that information tomorrow. And, and you're correct, Mr. President. Obviously, it's, it's all pending a second reading vote, but um, depending on the outcome of this vote, we'll, we may um, get so the information project. out there. Okay. Yes, we'll be optimistic. All right. Yes. Pretty wily group. I can fool you. So, all right. 
He's going to take that chance. And I'll have the advantage of a lot of seniors will have filled out their applications and <laughs> you guys can the pressure tell them on. why you oh, want to know on second reading. <laughs> oh, I get it. All right. Okay. Now, mainly we just want to get this in place so that July 1 because it's going to be a, the first year is going to be truncated because right. it's really a, it's a, it's a calendar you know, tax year. And so um, it's going to be a slightly more truncated in the first year. So. Councilor O'Donnell. Oh, I'm sorry, Mayor. I was just, I, I was just wondering, um, so it's, it's people over 60 and it's veterans who are also over 60? Just... No, veterans, it's two separate programs. Right. Um, the, the, the senior tax right uh, tax workout program had been in place for many, many years. They just added the veteran one as part of the latest Valor Act. That one, the only requirement is that you are a veteran because they were under mass law. I was just curious, the, the two whereases are identical and then reference being over 60. So I don't know if that age. Hmm. Is that, uh, do we, uh, that may be a Scrivener's error. I'm not sure. Okay. We have the over 60 in the veterans one. In the veteran We may need to strike that. Um, it's possible. That may just be an error, a Scrivener's error. Um, because that is not a requirement of the, of the, of the Mass General Law. So. This is for the veterans one. I don't have it in front of me, so. You could do it on second. Yeah. No. On mine, they both say so. Hmm. What? Which uh, paragraph, Councilor? No, only only in the whereas. So Mine says that's out over the age of oh. 60. <laughs> That's a Scrivener's error, but the actual enacting clause, I don't think it says it, so. Um, so it doesn't, is it doesn't matter, or would you prefer to? Uh, it doesn't matter, because we couldn't limit it, even if we wanted to, to, okay. people, to veterans over 60, because the law is, yeah, so. I, I, would, I would ask for a minute to just put the colon right out there, understand the law, mm -hmm. and the services, because that's what we for the, for the veterans. The yeah, take out the persons over 60 in the veterans order, yeah. I would move that. Second. Okay. So that motion's been made and second. Any discussion on the proposed amendment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And she's making that correction right now. Um, so we got to give Pam a chance here. Okay. Uh, Pam, please call the roll. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Murphy, you have something? Uh, yeah, I wanted to move the capital projects 29 to 33 as a group. You can do that next time. Second. Okay. 29 to 33. 29 to 33 are the capital projects. Um, and, and one of those we're going to want a second reading on once we're done. There's yes. a person yeah. on the clock. Yeah. Yeah, we were hoping to, to request Do two readings on the clock. Thirty two. So the first one we'll we'll all anticipate an uh, suspension of rules. But right now, uh we're talking about twenty nine to thirty three. Twenty nine to thirty three. We're then do staring down the barrel of twenty nine through thirty three. Um and actually there is no boilerplate. Okay. Uh this is just an itemized uh capital projects. Mm -hmm. um, this is ordered that the following capital projects be appropriated from the FY14 uh, general fund undesignated fund balance, aka free cash. Northampton Public Schools Technology Plan, uh, phase three of a uh, three year plan, $100,000. The RK uh, Finn Ryan Road School roof membrane replacement project, $31,000. The Leeds Elementary School Skylight Repairs Window Replacement, $35,000. Uh, the Upgrade Building Energy Management System at Northampton High School, $150,000. Replacement of the JFK Middle School Pool Dehumidifier Unit, and that's $155,000. The, cool, uh, the JFK Middle School Security Upgrade, $20,000. The fire department rechassis of the 1994 rescue truck, $165,000. Electric hybrid staff inspection vehicle for the fire department, $32,500. Replacement of two administrative vehicles for the police department, $74,000. Traffic calming, $60,000. 
Equipment for Florence Fields Maintenance, $100,000. Clement Street Bridge <coughs> Engineering, $50,000 for a total of $972,500. Um, this is also upon the recommendation of the mayor. This is um, a capital project to be appropriated from the receipts reserved for appropriation. Parking. Uh, two electric vehicles for parking enforcement, $35,000. Uh, install stairwell glazing in the garage, $15,000. Upgrade pay to park machines. Um, that's pay to park machines. Should be, I probably have a hyphen in between each one so we know that that's actually the name of the machine or the type. Uh, uh, $90,855 garage structural repairs phase two, $150,000 for a total of $290,855. Next up, uh, order that $319,000 be appropriated from the receipts reserved for appropriation sale of land account to the following capital projects. Leeds Elementary School, replace rubber roof, $175,000. R.K. Finn Ryan Road Elementary School, replace the rubber roof, $144,000. Um, and this is uh, ordered that $28,000 $253.40 remaining from the FY 2009 capital project for the Bridge Street School Detention Basin project uh, be reprogrammed to be used for the upgrade of the Leeds Elementary School clock, PA, and phone system. And this will be the one that uh, I two suspect yeah. uh, Councilor Murphy is going to want to parse out. And then $40,000 remaining from the FY 2006 capital project for the sidewalk design plans be reprogrammed for use for traffic calming projects. And then the sum of $360,000. Oh, that's a different. We, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it's just it's one too many. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any discussion on those? No? Roll call, please. Councilor Sarah. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. <coughs> Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. And I'd like to suspend rules to do a second reading on financial order 32, which is the reprogramming of the detention basin money for the lead school clock and PA and phone system. They want to get the order in for that hardware so that they can get it installed for the start of school in the fall. What Second. number was that? This is number, number 20, 32, the $28,000 from the, the basin at Bridge Street to the PA. It was a second. It was a second. So, so second a reading. motion made and seconded to suspend rules to allow for a second reading. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Move second reading. Second reading. Is there a second? Suspend rule. Second. Is, all right, motion's been made and seconded for a second reading. Any any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Levar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Council Sheriff. yes. Next up, you, uh, uh, Councilor Murphy, you have any, you have no other. Oh, no, I, 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 would, I would move this one on its own. <coughs> this is the sum of $360,000, and it's appropriate in the following amounts for replacement of departmental vehicles as described below. $180,000 for a 1985 six wheel dump truck. Uh, this is for the DPW Streets Division. $80,000 for a 1986 one ton 4x4 pickup. Also for the DPW Streets Division, eighty thousand dollars for a nineteen eighty six one. Uh, I believe it's one ton, not one town. Well, it may have only been in one town, but uh, one ton four by four pickup. That's also DPW Streets Division. Ten thousand uh, dollars for a two thousand Ford Explorer. Also for the DPW, but this is the Engineering Division. Ten thousand dollars for a two thousand two Ford Ranger also for the engineering division of the DPW for a total of $360,000. Second. 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 Any discussion on these very old vehicles? Old enough to vote and then some? Um, ready? Yep. 
Roll call, please. Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor White? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sharon? Yes. Councilor Yes. This upon the recommendation ordered that the sum of $500,000 is appropriated for street resurfacing and, and um, I should say that in the course of our discussion with the DPW, they're actually over the moon about this and even though it's woefully lower than they had hoped, but uh, is appropriated for street resurfacing and that to meet such appropriations, the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow $500,000 <coughs> under Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 7, Five, or any other enabling authority, and the mayor is authorized to take any other action necessary to carry out this project. I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second it. Any further discussion on this? Uh, this, we, as I said, we did discuss this in our hearings that um, uh, the public's obviously particularly sensitive to this issue. This is uh, experienced a rough spring, and this is going some ways to uh, mitigating some of the damage that we've experienced. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Pines. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sharon. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Yes. All right. That is it for the budget. Now we're up to the financial orders that have been referred out of uh, committee, mm -hmm. out of finance. Um, and thereby, I will spare you the reading because Bless you. Uh, Council Murphy has Take done advantage that. Of that. Forty minutes we've already spent on <laughs> this. Right. And I'm sure you'll all cast your mind back and try and remember item number 36, which is the financial order to appropriate one million five hundred thousand dollars over 15 years for Pulaski Park renovation. Move approval. Second. Motions are made and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. Council Yes. 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 been a request yes. to suspend rules on this because there is a deadline for the application. Suspend rule 14. Second. Motions are made to suspend rule 14 which calls uh, which allows us to conduct a second reading. All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any, uh, accept a motion put, uh, for second reading? So moved. Second. second. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Lavard. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sharon. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Next up is uh, an appropriation that actually has some questions, um, even though despite the fact there's a request for two readings. So uh, this is a financial order, $2,450 appropriated from the CPA budget for the Fitzgerald Lake Invasive Plant Eradication Project. I'll accept a motion to put it on the Move floor. To approve. Second. Motions are made. Further discussion? Councilor Klein. Um, I feel pretty strongly that uh, until we've done really uh, thorough due diligence around alternatives to using any kind of herbicide, um, that I can't in good conscience approve this. So I'm going to vote no. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Adams? No. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? No. Now, is there interest in suspending rules for the second reading? Councilor Murphy? I defer that, I think, and see if Conservation Commission and, and Ms. LaValle can come and deal with some of the councilors' concerns about the process okay. for second reading. Okay, so there's no request unless you're no. requesting that. No, okay, no suspension of rules. Okay, move on to the next order. Uh, $130,000 appropriated for the CPA Affordable Housing Reserve for uh, Christopher Heights Assisted Living Affordable Housing Project is rescinded. 
and there's a request for two readings on this as well. Um, so moved. The motion's made and seconded. Any further discussion? You all remember that this is actually just cleaning up channels, basically. Uh, no further discussion. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Chela. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Levar. Yes. Suspend Rule 14. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to suspend rules to allow for a second reading, and this is kind of important because we couldn't move on to the next one if we don't vote on this. So, <laughs> um, any discussion on the suspension of rules? Yep. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All second, second reading. Second reading is mo moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Several. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. O'Donnell, not oh, Lamarge. Councillor Sarah. Yes. Councillor Spector. Yes. Councillor Adams. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Lamarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Yes. Next up, of course, rhymes with that is the one hundred thirty thousand dollars appropriated from the CPA funding to the City of Northampton for the Christopher Heights Assisted Living Affordable Housing Project. Uh, also, request for two readings. I'll accept a motion to put it on the floor. So moved. Second. Motion's made. Motion's made. And second. Uh, any further discussion? Roll, please. Councillor Sheriff? Yes. Councillor Spector? Yes. Councillor Adams? Yes. Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labar? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. yes. Move to it. Spend two readings rule. Motions are made to suspend the rules. There a second? Second. 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 All right. The uh, motions are made and seconded to suspend the rules to allow for a second reading. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'll accept a motion. Move, Move second third. reading. Second reading is made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Councilor right. Spector? Yes. Councillor Adams. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Sheriff. Yes. You're gonna run out of. You got enough? Okay. Hey, okay. we got a whole other page. Okay. All right. <laughs> Getting worried. We're gonna have to suspend the meeting because we just couldn't record the vote anymore. <laughs> um, uh, next up is a financial order the, to authorize the mayor to purchase or otherwise acquire fee interests, easements, leases, and licenses for the development of a rail trail network on land owned by the National Grid Massachusetts Electric Company and Pan Am Railroad and Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Second. Made and seconded. Any further discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sierra? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Suspend rule. Sorry? Suspend rule. Uh, Councilor Labarge has made a motion to suspend rules. Is there a second? For a second reading, there is a request for it. Second. second. Okay. Question? Yes. Why, why are we suspending? Why are we? I think that's a reasonable question. Uh, Your Honor, do you know why we're suspending rules on this? The, This one's number 40. This is uh, the uh, national grid easement yes. issue. Um, the reason for this is because um, the Mass DOT has requested that we have this authorization in place um, uh, um, ASAP because they're trying to finalize the design work for the track improvements in that corridor. Um, and, uh, and it includes the design work for the underpass, the bike underpass, and it's sort of tied into the, um, to the track elevation that will have to be in place to accommodate that. So our, our, if we don't have these things in place, then the fear is that they'll have to come back and do them 
after the fact, after which the will fact. be much more. So the project, it would interfere with the process. Of the project. Yes. So okay. our, our, so our concern is we want to, we want to be able to show DOT that we do have the authority to to move forward on these easements. We're, st uh, I believe Mr. Fiden may have been here earlier. He yes, he explained. described that we're still having, um, trying to iron out the details with um, National Grid, uh, and so, uh, but we by by having this in place, we can potentially even just do a license, which would at least get us through a period long enough to be able to finish the negotiations. So that's the concern, um, because DOT needs this by the middle of the month. They want they need to know so they can finalize some of these plans and go out to bid on the work. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any, any other questions or discussion on that point? This is on the motion to suspend rules. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Yep. Uh, second reading has been, a motion for second reading has been made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor LaBarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sarah? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Next up is the transfer of $54,114. Uh, dollars to balance the FY 2014 budget. There is a request for two readings. I think we could probably project why that might be. Um, uh, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is made and second. Any further discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sarah. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Suspend rule 14. Uh, Councilor Barnes has made a, uh, a request for suspension of rules. Second. Is there a second? There's a second. Councilor Adams. This is only the first reading of the budget, so I, I actually don't know why we would need two readings on this. Your Honor, you, you want to speak to that point? It's okay. No, it's all right. You, you're squealing tires and things like that. Yes. Councilor Adams for, wants to know, <coughs> since this is only the first reading of the budget, why is it imperative to... Uh, um, have, have two it? readings on this. Uh, could you remind me the item number? It's, I'm sorry, it's, this is the, the item 41 transferring of $54,114 for the FY uh, to balance the 2014 budget. Mm -hmm. There's a request for two readings. So this is a this is a current budget, budget year. year. Yeah. We're just trying to do some of these. So um, you know, we're going to be probably be bringing these right up to the end. Mm -hmm. right? It'd be another set of them possibly next uh, next meeting. So these are FY14. Within the 14 budget, we're just trying to move money around different accounts. For example, our print, you know, I think one of them is our, the mayor's office printing account. Um, and we had initially budgeted the same number we budgeted last year. Uh, what we didn't anticipate was that this year the capital plan is now part of the budget, so it was bigger and a little longer, so our printing costs were a little higher. So that's why we're doing some. Moving some money around to, to backfill that. I, I, I understand all that. I guess what I what I don't understand is if this has to done, be done before the end of the fiscal year. This is reading number one tonight, and then we have reading number two in two weeks. And I just I don't see. Yeah. Was there a reason? Was there one? Was there an item in there that was time sensitive? Uh, in that set of transfers. I, I have. I, I requested. Yeah. It yeah. 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 Oh, he doesn't. Yeah, it was mainly a. Um, I think the finance director was saying that um, uh, all of these, the auditor has to book all these different changes and moving parts, and they're at the point now where they're trying to close down the budget. So I think she was hoping to try to spread those out over several weeks. So I think that was the rationale. Am I stating that correctly? As opposed to doing them all at the, you know, a whole slew of them all at once, mm -hmm. and then the auditor's office has basically two weeks to try to get all that, all that work done. Mm -hmm. Sure, please. Mm -hmm. And the other reason is, if you notice, police and fire are moving money from PS to OM. If you delay, they can't really sign contracts for anything until those are voted. Um, I think police wants to buy, uh, he talked about uniforms, and fire wants to buy some equipment. And we can't authorize them to enter into those contracts until the money's actually been moved. So it just, it would put it off two weeks. Mm -hmm. Councilman. And and you're going to bring more of these at our next meeting as we get closer to the end, and potentially more at our meeting in July 
right. to balance I, them. So I, I probably have about 10 more for the next, next meeting. meeting, and then we'll have some in July. But. So do you anticipate a suspending rules for all those as well? I, I would hope so, um, because well, on the on July 10th you have to do, do the it. meetings right. like because right. otherwise we can't do, do it. them. Um, but the ones on the 19th, you could have two weeks to consider. But again, these are so that accounts don't go into the red. And sometimes an account, I don't want an account to stay in the red without you appropriating it. So that's why I also ask for two readings. So. I understand. I, I, I share Councilor Adams' concern for a facility for using suspension rules. And we would discuss this before. And I, I, I accept this explanation. I do. I think that. Um, although it still makes me squeamish a little bit. I understand the bottleneck pressure that it creates if we, if we don't. And, and I personally don't see any, anticipate any challenges with these, but it, it, does, it does make me The only other thing I would say is that we're, you're not, we're not asking you to authorize any new spending. Right. This is all it's money that was already author appropriated in the FY14 right. budget. It's just it's, it's in one silo and another silo. Right. We're just asking you to move it from one silo to another. These are authorizations of transfers. They're just yeah. a transfer yeah. from not appropriations. Yeah, because right. by, by law, we have to come back. If, we, if something's in an OM, we need to get a transfer right. to move it to PS. So um, we're that's just voting on an Excel column, uh, essentially. Yeah, but the bottom line number is remaining the same. We're not asking you to increase or you know spend any additional dollars. That we're on the topic of suspension rules. Are there any other questions? Uh, all those in favor of suspension rules, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. I'll accept a motion for second reading. So move. Second. Motions made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor LaBarge? Yeah. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shira? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. This is a, the financial order, the donation of land off Stone Ridge Drive in this first reading. Motion approved. Motions are made. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Lavard. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sherry. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Murphy pointed out that I was going off my computer. old agenda computer, which has missed uh, the item number 43. Uh, which is the $2,400 to purchase or otherwise acquire for conservation land on Dyke Road. Move to approve. Second it. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Donald. Yes. Councilor Sharon. Yes. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. I also missed uh, item number 42. Okay. This is the appropriation of $29,527 in insurance proceeds uh, received from the property damage claim for a police cruiser to the police department OOM uh, counterfeit and automobiles. And there's a request for two readings on this one. Um, and it, the police chief mentioned it in the budget hearings, yeah, as you it. recall. Uh, there's been a motion made. Second. And seconded. Any further discussion on this? Uh, for the public who doesn't know, there was a cruiser that was a new cruiser that was damaged in a rollover. And this is uh, to replace and outfit um, a new vehicle. Uh, I'm sorry. You would like a roll call? Yeah, I'd, we'd have to do a roll call on this one anyway. So roll call. Please. You got it. I mean, uh, Councilor Murphy. Yes, sorry. Murphy. <laughs> 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 it's not that funny. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hold on. Yes. 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 Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Huh? <laughs> yes, please. Council Klein. Yes. Council Yes. Suspend. All right, now we're. Jimmy. There's been a motion second. made. Jimmy, motion made and seconded to suspend rules to allow for a second reading. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? 
Uh, the reason the police chief offered was that uh, they need to process with this with the insurance company ASAP. Um, <clears throat> all those in favor of suspending rules to allow for a second reading, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'll accept a motion. Move second reading. Second, second reading. Motion made and seconded. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? And a roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sherrod? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Clark? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Murphy? All right. This is the appropriation of $332,370 from FY14 general Ed fund, undesignated fund balance, I'm sorry, free cash to uh, snow and ice, PS and OM, and flood control PS. And this is the second reading. Second. Motions have made and seconded. Any further discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor White? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. The end is near. Councilor Murphy. Yes. <laughs> 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 well, getting a little punchy. It's actually not as late as it could be, so. Uh, this is for, this is the second reading for the order of taking for laying out public ways over Bradford Street South and Bradford Street Extension. <clears throat> and Bradford Street North. Move to approve. Motion to okay. made seconded. Any further discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor White? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Lobar? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. This is the last uh, financial item this is uh, the order for acquisition of sewer easement over land of David H short this is a second reading I'll accept a motion so second any further discussion roll call please uh, Councilor Sheriff yes Councilor Spector yes Councilor Adams yes Councilor Carney yes Councilor Dwight yes Councilor Klein yes Councilor Levar yes Councilor Murphy yes Councilor O'Donnell yes now we're into orders and ordinances. Uh, the first order is uh, second reading for to change the city council rules, rule three, suspension of council rules. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion on this? Did we miss a financial order? 46, 47 maybe it is now. David Short, land. No, we, oh, we just did that. that. We did we that. did that one? Yeah, that was the last one we did. <laughs> and you voted yes. <laughs> <laughs> voted to donate more money. <laughs> 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 Keep going. <laughs> you guys voted to impeach me. <laughs> and I accept. <laughs> um, okay, so up to the orders and ordinance. We are so close. So we're on page four or five. All right. Uh, this is, as I said, this is a second reading for the city council uh, to change the city council rules. And that is the rule three suspension of council rules. I'll accept the motion. Second. Oh, we did that already? Yeah. Any, okay, any further discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor White? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labar? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Next up, we're voting on stormwater and flood control utility fee. And this is the second reading. Move approval. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any further discussion on this item? Uh, we're now doing a roll call on stormwater and flood control utility fee. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. <laughs> yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Respector? Yes. This is uh, second reading to amend 350-7.4 um, signs permitted in the B district, uh, projecting blade signs and standard wall signs by right. Move approval. Second. Motions are made. Second for second reading. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Lepard? Yes. 
Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Chair? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Next up is to amend 312-82, crossing roadways, also second reading. Move approval. Second. Motions have been made and seconded for second reading. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Um, Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Next one gets up. A, gets a little tricky. You may recall seeing this once before. <laughs> it's, but we have to do, we, we kind of messed up the protocol here. So this is to amend 350 to extend the moratorium through December 31st, 2014. Um, and it, it is to refer to ordinance uh, to extend that moratorium until December 31st, 2014. Actually, if I, if I may, yeah, yeah. I, it came from ordinance. So I don't know if it has to go back right. there. The solicitor... This is based on the solicitor's request because it needs a public hearing on just that item that we didn't post. Oh, that's for. Yeah, didn't even though it happened at a public hearing, it needs another public hearing. It needed hearing. a special yeah, posting. Okay. <coughs> Which will be, be okay. It is because yeah. it was extended, so it's right. anyway. So there will be a public hearing in ordinance at the next ordinance meeting uh, if, if this survives the referral. <laughs> I don't want to presume that this is passed. You want me to um, come in on it? What, what happened, uh, this is for that seven or more zoning. And it, during the last public hearing, we determined that we weren't going to get it done by the expiration of the current moratorium. So it was decided by the joint public hearing to extend the moratorium to give ourselves more time to finish the work. It's our expectation, I think, that uh, it will return to organi ordinance in our July meeting and be sent back to council at that point. So it's the, the extension is to the end of the year, but it's our expectation that we'll, it'll arrive at council for our July, for our meeting in July or August. It's not gonna take that long, but it's not gonna be done. We don't want the moratorium to run out until the ordinance is done. That's why. Actually, actually I think the moratorium is up on July 1st. Yeah. So it's coming back, this is coming back for two readings. At the next council meeting, yes, or to extend the moratorium, right? Yes, but I don't think we'll use the whole extension, right? You know, I think that. we won't use the whole extension, but we don't want the moratorium to run out till the underlying zoning is exactly. Right. And at the, at the next ordinance committee will be advertised so, that which this is, is June 9th, yeah, right? It'll be on the agenda, yeah. it'll be an item, uh, agenda it's item right. for the next ordinance committee. Mm -hmm. So once we've uh, Council O'Donnell, um, it may be late. I may be fuzzy. Or it may be both both true. I think. Um, but um, if we pass this now, is there is there time for this to be posted in time for an, a Monday hearing in order? It was already posted the day after our last. Oh, yeah. um, yeah, right. It's already. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It just already, wanted to make it's already posted. Yeah. At least you knew which one we were on. <laughs> you guys have done actually you've done yeoman's work here i have to say so i, I I'm, I'm really grateful for that. We're, we're staggering towards the finish line so the uh so the uh i haven't heard a motion yet on referral a motion to make to refer and seconded any further discussion on this item uh all those in favor of referring please say aye aye any opposed okay next up this is to amend 312-117 schedule, uh, what's that, 16, <laughs> Roman numerals for crying out loud, <laughs> on street and off street handicapped parking spaces, Henshaw Avenue, and this is to be referred to uh, ordinance. Move referral. Can, can I move? Referred to ordinance. Oh, I'm sorry. May I, uh, can we move six, seven, and eight as a group? You want to move six, There's seven, and eight as a group? Move yep. them as a group. All right. The, I'll Nine? Excuse me? Did you say a nine, too? And not nine. Nine is substantively different. S six, six, seven, and eight, so I'll read number seven. That's to amend 312-102, Schedule 1, parking uh, prohibited at all times in Massasoit Street. Uh, that's also to be referred. And then or, uh, to ordinance, and also amend 312-102, Schedule 1, parking prohibited at all times on Prospect Street. Also to be referred to ordinance is a motion for those three. Second. Motions been made and seconded to refer all three. Any further discussion on those items? 
All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, those will be referred. Uh, finally, uh, amend 312-75, the compression <coughs> release engine brake use, operation of heavy commercial vehicles, and that's also to be referred to ordinance. Is there a motion? Move referral. Motion to made and second for referral. Any discussion on the referral? I'm not quite sure why we didn't add that with the others, but. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to stretch it out, no, just to scotch more. It's totally, it's totally different. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> about parking. All, all those, all those in favor of referring, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I, I don't have any updates. Thank goodness. I, I'll spare you that. I mean, I had some thoughts, but I'll spare you. Uh, is there any request for information? Any new business? I will accept the motion to adjourn this Thank meeting. Adjourn. Second to adjourn. Motions are made. Second. Second, and all those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 I'm waiting on a vote. Waiting on a vote. Aye. Who wants to get out of here? Are any opposed? All right.